Welcome to your sanity safe space with your favorite YouTube podcast duo. Skag three, whoever he is. Get your blood fascist ass out of here! Saving the millennial generation in weekly installments. You are a terrific team on all counts. Live from a castle tower and his mother's basement, this, this is the Matt and Blonde Show. I'll lead an effective strategy to mobilize true international over depression. <laughs> <laughs> hey, why the fuck is the gas so hot, bitch? Lincoln, Lincoln Riley, an innocent young woman who was killed by an illegal. That's right. But how many of thousands of people being killed by illegal? <laughs> Now, you should have said undocumented, but I, that's not a big thing, okay? No, well, I was, I, I actually wasn't even going to ask about that. I was just going to ask more about the moment, but you do think that he should have said undocumented? That wasn't going to be my question. Well, we usually say undocumented. Uh -huh. What the f*** is this? Are you serious? You used the word illegal. An undocumented person. I shouldn't have used illegal. It's undocumented. And look, they built the country. The reason our economy is growing. This version of Biden is the best Biden ever. You are fake news. Go back to where you come from, okay? Very fake news. I will eat your ass. I'll do it. That's a big game, man. It's not against the law, ho. Fuck you. Many of those people probably have AIDS. Well, it's not my concern. All right, America, go to the YouTube right now. Big ups to Rebecca for keeping Matt woke. Congratulations to both of you. You're awesome. All right, go, go. In five, four, three. I can't do it. We'll do it live. <laughs> Fuck it, we'll do it live. Hello and welcome to the show. It is a great show. It is a terrific show. It is a tremendous show. Frankly, the very best. You can ask anyone about that. People often do. I'm told this is the Matt and Blonde Show. My name is Matt Christensen. I'm flanked on my right, as always, by my wonderful co-host, Blonde. Welcome. Hello. Figured I'd give you some space up front to voice any daylight savings complaints you may have i did wake up at 11 30 so ah that happened yeah. so early <laughs> you got an <laughs> early start on the day i tell you here congratulations i well i figured you would have more to say but i guess not you're not you're not bothered by the the clock uh no the days are longer I, I don't care they're not see this is the thing they're not longer, they're not longer yeah. I, okay this you is know government I mean? nonsense you know i get more hours of daylight, one yeah. more hour of daylight to be specific, since you're so interested in my specific language usage. No, you're totally right. <laughs> I mean, it's government nonsense, but because I perceive that there is a one more hour of daylight a day. No, that's yeah. true. There is one more hour, hour of daylight a day. Uh, no, well, there isn't. It, it does well, yeah. get, the days get longer into the spring. It's just into the, the, the yeah. time is reading. I, I hear I, yeah, All right. We all understand. This is this is my fault for inviting daylight savings <laughs> conversation. Let's just move on. Hey, do you hate it that much? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, maybe I maybe I'm kind of annoyed. So I was trying to bait you into voicing mm. my own displeasure. But even if your body clock is messed up, like mine might be, could be worse. At least you're not in Haiti. At yeah. least there aren't cannibal gangs controlling oh. your streets. At least that's what's alleged. Do you believe the video of the guy eating? a leg that was cooking on an open flame in the street. Is that authentic Haiti footage or is that something else? Yeah, I 100% believe that. Okay. I, that I, was actually I, just Detroit in, in real time. <laughs> that makes even more sense. We will uh, examine the Haitian scenes later in the show. Actually, we won't because there's very little that I can show you and have it be uh, you know YouTube acceptable. But we will discuss Haitian scenes later in the show. Two things are for certain, though. Number one, this has to be the fault of the meddling whites. And number two, Haiti is definitely not a shithole country, despite what you heard, I don't know, six years ago now. Not a shithole country, confirmed. Before we get nice. to that, Biden is making his Lincoln-Riley gaffe from the State of the Union even worse. He said over the weekend he regrets calling Lincoln-Riley uh, the killer of, of Lincoln-Riley. He regrets calling that person an illegal yeah. during his banter with Marjorie Taylor Greene. I forgot. I, I obviously I just heard it in the intro again. Not only that, but he said illegals built this country. I mean, that's a new one. I've not heard that one before. So 
We'll discuss that and, of course, all the other points of interest from the speech. Plus, we have hoax hate later in the show. And tonight's movie review is The Boondock Saints. So stick around. You know that the uh, the, the AI face swap for The Boondock Saints is going to be good. We'll, uh, we'll catch up with your if super If it's chance. one of the faggy Willem Dafoe scenes, I'm going to be really upset. Of course it is. I mean, what, what else would you pick? <laughs> I haven't well, seen it. I never watched those first. Uh, so. By the way, that hateful term, that slur is is Defoe's from the movie. That was like the best part in the movie without getting too far into the review early on. That scene yeah, cracked me up. Movie sure did suck. What? Yeah. Oh, my God. OK, well, we're going we're going to have a disagreement later in the show then. Oh, God, what is wrong with you? We'll, we'll catch up with we'll your super chats. In between topics, 10 bucks and up on the Sunday show because we are no good low down money grabbers. Of course, it will be all this and more in your favorite favorite couple hours of listening material. Remember, you can find everything show related and support the show for as little as a buck a month over on the website. That is mattchristensenmedia.com. Listener support is hugely appreciated, and it is what keeps the show operational. So if you enjoy the show, please consider supporting the show. We also have show merchandise for sale on the site as well. Plus, we have offers from friendly listener-owned businesses as well. This week's feature business is our friends at Hero Soap Company. Sometimes being a man means doing a little more than what's expected of you. Even if that means taking yourself to the end of the line. But every man needs something at the end of the day to remind him that his work's worthwhile. That's why every man should be using Timberline from Hero Soap Company. It's a frosty pine soap where the forest meets the peaks. A woodsy scent with extra menthol for a high altitude cooling effect. (laughs) Giving your balls the best tingle this way west of Yellowstone. So try Timberline today and treat yourself to the refreshing ball tingling you deserve. Timberline from Hero Soap Company. You know, I love that music so much, I just took it from the Timberline ad and took the words out of it and (laughs) made it my bumper music on my Wednesday show. It's not a joke in that context. It's very serious, you know, but it's actually (laughs) great music outside of the the joke voiceover from uh, our friend Chris Gard. But uh, that's right. When you try Hero Soap Company, not only are you getting a great smelling all natural product, not only can you subscribe and get soap straight to your door each month, but of course you can get signature soaps designed by both of us as well. Try Blonde Signature Soap Oat Plus Almond for gentle exfoliation. Or of course you can try my two offerings. Timberline, as you heard, is a frosty pine cooling effect. Or Old West is a uh, the scent of sweet leather and oak barrels. Uh, Hero also offers a selection of shampoos and conditioners as well. And now, as I mentioned previously, even cologne. I have sampled the cologne myself. It's a solid cologne. Easy to apply. Smells great. None of that liquid mess comes in a fantastic teak wood scent. Very exotic. You can try any of Hero Soap's excellent offerings. Soap, shampoo, conditioner, now even cologne and more. Get 10% off using promo code MCLISTENER. That's 10% off everything from our friends at Hero Soap Company using promo code MCLISTENER. Of course, you can find everything you need from Hero Soap, plus other great deals from the rest of our friendly listener-owned businesses, including Western Razor Company, Kineo Mountain Woodsmithing, Phoenix Ammunition, and more. That's at madchristensenmedia.com slash deals, deals by listeners. Four Ooh. listeners, a couple items of housekeeping coming from both of us individually. Speaking of that Wednesday show, this week my guest uh, was Robbie Starbuck, director of the new documentary The War on Children. So we discussed the movie and its big themes, like the importance of strong fatherhood, of course, as well as uh, the details of the movie, like the allegation from one of the drag queens featured in the film that he was tricked into participating in the show by, among other things, false pronouns used in an email to bait him into the documentary. (laughs) You can find that episode on uh, the homepage or the podcast page of my website, mattchristensenmedia.com slash podcasts, available in both video and audio formats. And, uh, of course, my Wednesday show, The Matt Christensen Hour, streams live on Wednesday nights on Tenet Media. 
9 p.m. Eastern time. And I don't, this is news to me because I just saw it in the notes. You have a production note of your own. First one, it's been a while. By midnight tonight, I am releasing a video. Can you believe it? Is everybody at are home you, cheering like people give a shit? They, they you, really don't. No one asked for this video. Nobody. And I'm putting it out. And uh, Congratulations, I know, butthead. Right? Thank you. Are you I'm, able to disclose the topic? Yes. It's about sudden infant death syndrome. Ah. Uh, yeah. Do you have a particular opinion on that? Um, without, yeah, it doesn't exist. Like, okay, I was going to say. It does not exist. Yeah. <laughs> without... Um, well, at the risk of getting my wife angry with me, she is of a similar perspective that it's all a big, uh, it's all a yeah. big hoax. It's a big. Op. I provide an exhausting amount of evidence. The video is like twenty five minutes long. Hmm. I got, I really spurred out on some research. Anyway, so if you want to watch it, it'll be uh, released after the show. So is your is your opinion that it is the claim of it is used to cover up other causes of death, or what is the nature of the, the yes. misrepresentation. Yeah. Some of it's vaccine injury. Some people are murdering their children. Some people are accidentally suffocating their children, but an accidental suffocation is not SIDS. SIDS is a diagnosis of exclusion. It's just any time that somebody, that, that a child under one dies and they, after an investigation, haven't been able to find the cause, then they call it SIDS. Mm. Like that's not a fucking disease. It's not, it's not a condition. It's not a disease. It's just like, we don't know what happened. Is there a, a time for the release of this video? Before midnight, I got to send some notes to Mid <laughs> my 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 editor. <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> Congratulations, uh, midnight Pacific. Yeah. So you selected the opportune time of what three a.m. Eastern to release? I did. Yeah. All right. I like well, it because I told people that I would get a video out by the end of the week. Oh, so that's why it's a, I see. <laughs> I, f I figured there was a reason. It's like, well, whatever. I mean, any time is a good time, I guess. But listen, the situation I have right. going on here is not as a you've got a whole thing of, of being on time and like actually doing work. I'm amazed I got I'm going to get a video. Out, I like so. routines. You're right. They, they are uh, useful for productivity. But uh, <laughs> hey, glad to have you back. And uh, I look forward Thank to you. checking it out. And I hope everyone else will, too. Um, one of the things I discussed on my Wednesday stream, because, of course, the news was breaking at the time, was that Nikki Haley quit the race. We discussed the possibility mm. of that last Sunday. And you could, you could call that a disappointing Super Tuesday performance if it wasn't totally as expected. In fact, she outperformed. She overperformed. She actually won a state. I Vermont. couldn't believe it. Vermont. Yeah. And so I yeah, issued yeah. my apology to Nikki Haley on Wednesday. Because I predicted she wouldn't win one. And she also, I mean, if you count D.C., she won that, too, even though it's not a state. And there are like five Republicans who voted in it. But two wins for Nikki Haley. Yeah. If you want to be charitable. But on Wednesday night, some in the audience said, hey, where is the uh, where's the I will I will remember you bit for Nikki Haley? And I said, no, that that's a Sunday bit. Oh, I don't steal bits from my Sunday show, even though it's like it's all my property. But, you know, you, you don't take things from Sunday. You can plagiarize yourself. Shoehorn them into Wednesday. They're different shows. Uh, but I, I promised that I would have one. So, of course, uh, I have to. Uh, well, as is tradition, we have to remember Nikki Haley. I will you. Do you want? Dick Cheney in three-inch heels. They're five-inch heels, and I don't wear them unless you can run in them. I wear heels. They're not for a fashion statement. They're for ammunition. Will you Nobody knows what that means. Me. Our next question comes from someone who describes herself as a concerned South Carolina voter. Why won't you debate Nikki Haley? Oh, Nikki, don't do this, Nikki. Are you doing okay, Donald? You might need a mental competency test. Oh... <laughs> I'll leave you with this. May the best woman win. Oh, she's a woman. I get it. Ah, oh, yeah. All right. Oh, it's so bad. She oh, vowed God. at the same. Uh, that was that was in New Hampshire. That maybe. When was the New Hampshire primary? I can't remember. Um, inside of a you know a month or two ago, whatever. She vowed she wasn't going anywhere. She wasn't going to quit. Um and. Well, here we are. She's done. She quit. Way too late, uh, of course, but better late than never, I suppose. Nikki Haley, of course, did not endorse 
Donald Trump in her very brief concession speech. She instead encouraged Trump voters to earn or uh, encouraged Trump rather to earn her voters, which, of course, by definition, are unavailable to Trump because they are never Trump Republicans and Trump deranged Democrats. Those are the two people in her voter base. There is no such thing as an actual Nikki Haley voter, as in someone who actually supports Nikki Haley and doesn't just support her because they hate Trump. And so those voters can't be courted by Trump. Case in point, there's even more polling. We discussed last week an exit polling that showed that half of her voting base through the primaries was uh, ex-Biden voters. Yes. Yeah. Well, no, they're not even ex, really, because a survey, again, from um, from Emerson found that that 63 percent of Nikki Haley's supporters are going to back Biden in the general election. That's twice as many. Bro. Oh, that is so 63 percent. Yes. Uh, and 27 percent are going to Trump. So. So maybe a quarter of her voters were like authentic Republicans, 10 percent undecided. So there's some some of those good faith independents we were talking about. Close to two thirds are just Democrats who hate Trump and were never going to vote for Nikki Haley in the first place and are going home to Biden regardless. So anyway, uh, as far as the waste of this campaign, how much did it cost? Well, when you factor in official campaign spending as well as third party political action committee spending, it was only one hundred and twenty million dollars. She collected 89 delegates of the 1,215 needed to secure the nomination. So one hundred and twenty million dollars bought just over seven percent of the delegates necessary. That is just an astronomical amount of money. Just one point three million dollars per delegate. That's all. So I will say this to Nikki Haley's credit, uh, beyond her impressive performance of two primaries, one, as far as I've seen, she has completely shut the hell up since Wednesday yeah. and her speech on Wednesday. She didn't do the victory dance about Vermont. She gave like a four minute speech. And since then, she has shut the hell up. OK, so, fine. Great. That's a start, right? I yeah, I got to give credit. We're due on that. Well, um, I, I wouldn't say that the uh, Hannah Gutierrez read news is surprising necessarily. Uh, obviously, she was party to some some mistakes that were made on the set of Rust. So her getting convicted of involuntary manslaughter, I think a lot of people saw that coming. But I'm, I'm trying to figure out if this is good news or bad news for Alec Baldwin and his forthcoming. It's excellent news for, for Alec Baldwin. There's a case she contrary. Also, but what, I totally what, what happened with this. Her? She had been charged with evidence tampering, too. Do you remember that? Because she passed off a small bag of weed, which they're calling a bag of narcotics. I, I know that she there there were allegations of her distributing and participating in drug use, but I didn't know that was the basis for an evidence tampering charge. Uh, because she, I, I guess she didn't want to get caught with weed after all this happened. She's like, oh, shit. Uh, but, but she was found not guilty on that charge. But she was convicted, of course, of involuntary manslaughter. Um, her attorney, Jason Bull, said afterward that she's going to appeal the conviction and she's looking at 18 months, $5,000 fine. They're probably going to sentence, schedule sentencing in April. They might have actually already done that. Anyway, so we'll find out. Um, but yeah, jurors were not buying it. Uh, the prosecutor said that she exhibited an astonishing lack of diligence on set, cutting corners, skipping out on gun safety measures. And these constant, never ending safety features made the fatal shooting willful and foreseeable willful though i'm not really sure that i like that terminology when she was charged with involuntary yeah maybe that's just a misspeak but it was a two and a half hour deliberation by the jury so it doesn't sound like there was a lot of disagreement debate ambiguity no we have a clip of a juror um explaining why she was convicted and he's he's pretty straightforward like well it was obviously going to happen. We can watch that now. Yeah, he's like, I, I drive trucks, and if I smash the truck into someone, I, you know, mm -hmm. that's that's my fault if I didn't check the brakes or whatever. Anyway, members of the jury on day ten reaching their verdict based on one single fact. Much is just that all the never did the safety checks, never checked the rounds to pull them out to look at them, shake them. I mean, if you'd have done that, this wouldn't have happened. Jury member Alberto Sanchez comparing Gutierrez Reed's lack of checking ammunition similar to how he has to be careful with what he does as a CDL driver. I, I have to check in my vehicle, make sure I'm not going to slam into people or do something like that. And that was her job to check those rounds, those firearms. Yeah, yep. 
And so she's already in jail. I assume probably to get a head start on her forthcoming sentence. Is that the is that mm-hmm. the thing? It yeah. sounds like she's having a bad time. I don't know. I, I guess I wouldn't expect her to have a good time. Her lawyer told TMZ that, yeah. but that she's just having a hard time in jail. So her family's going to come visit her. And I don't know. I kind of, I kind of feel for her after reading that article a few weeks ago where she was talking about how she wrote them repeatedly saying like, I cannot perform proper safety measures when I have two jobs. You guys are going to have to help me. She was asking for help constantly. She was trying to get Alec Baldwin to do these uh, extra safety exercises. He was just refusing to do it. Just jerking around on set all the time. Like my problem with this is how did these live rats, these live rounds get on set. But as far as her not forcing, not being able to force everybody to engage in safety measures and stuff like that and having too much work to do, they needed to hire two people. Yeah. And, and, and those aren't mutually exclusive things either. You know, she could be saying, I need more help. You're asking too much of me and safety is being compromised. Also, I'm a drug using degenerate who is irresponsible. Yes. You know, I mean, those, yeah. th- they yeah, both yeah. can be absolutely true to emphasize that based on my understanding of the case. And if, um, if jurors believe that it was, it was demonstrated beyond a reasonable doubt that she did not follow safety protocol as a person who was responsible for that safety protocol, and or potentially was the person who is responsible for live rounds on the set. I mean, I, I don't I don't have a problem with finding criminal negligence there. Correct. Um, yeah. And so it, it doesn't it doesn't seem like a completely unreasonable finding for me. Granted, you know, we followed this this case uh, fairly closely, but I didn't I wasn't able to follow the developments of, you know, the day to day on the trial over the last the last 10 days uh, ending last week. So perhaps there's some details that I missed, but uh, but as I mentioned, you know, the big question too is is how this affects Alec Baldwin. Does this help Alec Baldwin or does it hurt him? And when this news broke on Wednesday, just before I did my stream, without ha- having the ability to read much in detail about it, my reaction initially was exactly what you just said, which is you know clearly this this helps Alec Baldwin. Or I, I would think knee jerk reaction that it does. And I assume you're thinking is something like, well, Alec Baldwin has a scapegoat and a very credible one because she's convicted beyond a reasonable mm-hmm. doubt. Or mm-hmm. I don't want to mischaracterize why you think it helps him, but would that be would that be your general perspective? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he has a, a bona fide scapegoat now. And not only not only Hannah Gutierrez Reed, who is convicted in a court of law, but assistant director Dave Hall, who took a plea deal, also handled the gun, also responsible for gun safety. So if you're Alec Baldwin, you say, well, you've got guy A who's responsible for this. And he admits that he did it. He took a plea deal, pled guilty. Um, You have Hannah Gutierrez-Reed, who has been convicted by a jury for the same irresponsibility. And so clearly those are your guys and not me, Alec Baldwin. And that was my initial thinking. But according to reporting in Variety, attorneys who followed the trial have mixed opinions about whether the outcome is good or bad for Alec Baldwin. And some offered the theory that we just discussed, that Baldwin gets a scapegoat, that's a win for him. The other side, though, is that Gutierrez Reed's conviction shows that the special prosecutors on this case can win. And based on their commentary and commentary from the DA who hired those special prosecutors, they're still very serious about going after Alec Baldwin. They view Alec Baldwin potentially as their primary target in this prosecution. So, and not only does it demonstrate the potential skills in getting a conviction of the prosecution team, but this conviction shows that a jury can be persuaded that workplace negligence or poor management can establish that criminal liability. So the question is, of course, there'll be a different jury. It won't be the same one. It'll be a different trial. Will the next jury find that Alec Baldwin was responsible for this set and this incident in the same way that Gutierrez Reed was? Now, on the one hand, he's not uh he's a producer he's responsible for many things on the set but he's not the weapons guy or the weapons girl on the other on the other hand he pulled the trigger and prosecutors at this trial hannah gutierrez reed's trial they hammered on that point repeatedly alec baldwin pulled the trigger mechanically speaking there is no other way that that gun went off but for alec baldwin pulling the trigger even though gutierrez reed's defense team did not dispute that point so you you have a, a skilled team of prosecutors 
that are aggressive against Baldwin and very intent on going after the point that he pulled the trigger, even in the tangential way against Hannah, Hannah Gutierrez Reed. I don't know. I mean, I, I, given given Alec Baldwin's connections and given the scapegoats that he have that he has, I would be surprised if he gets the same conviction that Hannah Gutierrez Reed just got because he faces the same charge in voluntary manslaughter. We will have to wait to see. Uh, the, the argument presented in this article persuaded me a little bit more that it's possible, though, that maybe I'm I'm missing it when I think that this is obviously a benefit for Alec Baldwin. Trial scheduled to begin on July 9th. Again, he faces that same charge. Involuntary manslaughter. Do you have any other thoughts on that? No, I can't believe this is still ongoing. How many years ago was this? It was uh, It was right after my son was born. I remember it was October 2021. Jeez. So we're coming up on three years, two and a half years ago. All right. Uh, another week. Just It's just forever problems for Fannie Willis in Georgia. We still don't have a decision from the judge about whether to disqualify her and her office from prosecuting the Trump case, uh, possibly dismissing the charges as well. That should be coming soon. Last week, uh, we discussed that there was word of even more evidence of her corruption and lies about her relationship with Nathan Wade, her, of course, her underqualified boyfriend who she hired to prosecute Trump and cash in on the public dime. Well, some of that additional evidence uh, was revealed this week. So on Tuesday, defense lawyers presented two new witnesses, both of whom say they previously spoke with Terrence Bradley. Terrence Bradley is Wade's former business partner and divorce uh, divorce lawyer who sent those texts that we reviewed last week. Even though he was evasive on the stands, and no, I didn't have any direct knowledge of their relationship. I was just speculating, even though he described it in specific detail in the text, but whatever. Now you have two witnesses saying, oh yeah, we spoke to Bradley and he said, I definitely have personal knowledge that their relationship began before she hired him to prosecute the case. The two witnesses are Cindy Lee Yeager, a deputy deputy DA in neighboring Cobb County and Manny Aurora, one of the defense lawyers for Trump co-defendant Kenneth Chesebro, who already took a plea deal. But Aurora says Bradley told him that Wade had a garage door opener at Willis's condo long before he was ever hired. I'm sure there that's a, that's a black person thing too. Just like uh, having piggy banks full of 10 grand in cash. Yeah. Garage door openers are also, it's a black person thing. You wouldn't understand (laughs) according to Fannie Willis's dad. So they're both saying, yeah, we had conversations with Terrence Bradley. He told us that now it's unclear if the judge will allow or even care about that testimony based on his commentary that we reviewed last week. He might just say, I've seen enough. I don't even need to hear from these witnesses. Fannie Willis and company are off the case. Or maybe he wants to hear from these witnesses in case he has any lingering doubt. But I mean, this if if these guys are willing to testify to say that, yeah, Terrence Bradley told us exactly what he says in those texts at the time. I mean, I I I don't see what I already didn't see how you can possibly leave Fannie Willis on this case. But this this would be a kill shot to the remaining doubt that Terrence Bradley just made up a bunch of bullshit when he was describing it. Clearly not the case. Yep. Also, let's assume – so if if Fannie Willis is kicked off the case, maybe it goes to another prosecutor or maybe Fannie Willis is allowed to prosecute the case still. Well, then the case against Trump also has a major legal hurdle, potentially. We got some new information this week that is going to make the prosecution of the allegations made in this racketeering scheme more difficult because it looks like the key evidence is tainted. It turns out that infamous phone call after the election in which Trump asked Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger to find 11,780 votes, that was illegally recorded. No. So it's inadmissible? Well, I I don't know. I don't know how this is going to play out. But this is according to the recording, of of course, is is a central piece of evidence in, in the entire case against Trump and 18 co defendants. This is so funny. This is just this house of cards. This is um this is according to a new book by Michael, uh, Michael Isakoff, quoting Jordan Fuchs, who is Raffensperger's chief of staff. And Fuchs is actually the one who recorded the call. And when Fuchs recorded that call, again, Trump calls Raffensperger and says, There's no way that I lost Georgia. The difference is eleven thousand votes and change. 
we got to find those 11,000 votes. And the, the case is really, do you think Trump was telling him to erase 11,000 votes or make up 11,000 votes? Or do you think Trump was saying or thinking in his head, I know that there are 11 or 12,000 bullshit fraud votes that, that should not be counted or 11,000 yeah. legitimate votes that you haven't counted. Those need, those need to be found. That's really the nature of the dispute about that call. Was it criminal in intent or was it, was it sincere in finding for, you might say the fraud didn't exist. Those fraudulent ballots aren't real. If Trump believes that they're real, it's not really a criminal intent thing. It's like a calling for investigation yeah. type thing. But um, Fuchs is the one who recorded that call. And Fuchs, when she recorded that call, was in Florida. And she's the one who leaked the recording of that call to the Washington Post after the call broke the whole story open. The problem legally is that Florida is a two-party consent state, as in both parties to the call have to consent to the recording of the call or the recording is illegal. Right. From the book, uh, quote, Fuchs has never talked publicly about her taping of the phone call. She learned after the fact that Florida, where she was at the time, is one of 15 states that requires two-party consent for the taping of the phone call. A lawyer for Raffensperger's office asked the January 6th committee not to call her as a witness for reasons the committee's lawyers assumed were due to her potential legal exposure. The committee agreed. But when she was called before a Fulton County special grand jury convened by Fannie Willis, she was granted immunity and confirmed the taping, according to three sources with direct knowledge of her testimony. Uh, according to Asikoff, she didn't even have Raffensperger's permission to record the call. Now, she is his chief of staff, so maybe they had some like pre-existing agreement that she records all his conversations or something. I don't know. But she definitely didn't have Trump's permission. So how does all of that play out when the trial is in Georgia, but the evidence violated the laws of Florida while she was there? That's a legally complex question. I can't tell you the answer to that, but Molly. Uh, Hemingway, so it might be admissible. That's crazy. I don't know. Uh, Molly Hemingway at the Federalist writes this quote, fruit of the poisonous trees is a doctrine that extends the exclusionary rule to make evidence inadmissible in court. If it was derived from evidence that was illegally obtained. As the metaphor suggests, if the evidential quote unquote tree is tainted, then so is the quote unquote fruit. The doctrine was established by these Supreme Court decisions, blah, blah, blah. The rule typically favors even testimonial evidence resulting from excludable evidence, such as a confession. With Fannie Willis repeatedly saying the entire the entire investigation into Republicans was the result of a phone call that was illegally recorded. Defendants might pursue legal recourse. It's the latest challenge for Willis, even if the political ally judge reviewing whether she can continue prosecuting Georgia Republicans rules in her favor. So we'll see how that yeah. develops. But of course, that's even a step ahead. Like, Is this case going to be prosecuted at all? We don't know. There that. is no way. There's no way they're going to move forward with this. No matter what public sentiment towards Trump is, uh, the, the buffoonery has has just made this case inaccessible it's, well, it's there's no way i'll see your buffoonery and raise you one e Jean carroll though of course <laughs> that was a different standard of of uh, proof i'll give you that but in that case that case has um has changed my perspective on what is possible in a court of law like you can bring a crazy ass with no evidence whatsoever and still get a completely inexplicable result mm, that's true nothing so, happened to him so nothing happened to who Trump? Well, he got a massive fine, like eighty million dollars or whatever, a massive uh, award to E. Jean Carroll. It was eighty million dollars. Yeah, yeah. They're they're still sorting out. How, he just got a bond actually to pay for that while he appeals it. I don't know why I'm googling this. Like you don't know. I, I had no idea it was that much. Yeah, that's that's part of what makes the case so insane. It's not just that the jury sided with her. It's the award that they gave her. Ninety one million dollar bond. Yes. Yeah. <gasps> So, I thought he just had to just just a little bit of 
No, no, it's it's life changing money. And then remember, remember she went on Rachel Maddow and joked about how she was going to spend the money on what was it like a bunch of fancy clothes or she was going to take a vacation with Rachel Maddow. I can't remember exactly what she said, but that was her immediate reaction was, ha ha, isn't so isn't it so funny that I'm taking his money? I'm going to go spend it on luxuries. Hilarious. Yeah, but it was just some shut up money. Not like, oh, no, no, this isn't Stormy Daniels stuff. My net worth money. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, uh, moving on to uh, Joe Biden and what I think was already a disastrous state of the union. I'm not, you know, of of any uh, strange opinion in that. But I think what, (laughs) what is bizarre is to watch him and Democrats take what was a gaffe. And instead of just like shutting up about it and moving on, making the gaffe worse, worse, how they're talking about it and then highlighting the highlighting Biden's gaps and like explaining them. And it's just like, you know, stop talking about these things. Normally you guys are good at that. I, I can't believe that they, uh, I guess this is what wins 80 million votes sympathizing with the killer, the illegal alien killer of a 22 year old nursing student instead of the nursing student and her family. The and poor family. Can you imagine adding insult to, to injury in such a, on a national scale like this? I, I that's, I understand the gaff, the gaff. I don't think it's a gaff to call him an illegal, but Democrats think it's a, you know, an air quotes gaff in his state of the union because it's in the moment and it was banter with Marjorie Taylor Greene. I get that. To go on MSNBC over the weekend and say, number one, that he regrets using the word illegal because he'll never demonize anyone in that way. And then again, to say that illegal aliens built this country which is a further slap in the face to honest, hardworking American citizens who actually built this country and who are threatened by the open border. Who is he talking about? Like, like the Chinese railroaders? Is that <laughs> they, what he, I don't even know what he's talking about. Were they even legal, though, or were those Chinese illegal? I don't know. No, I think we, we brought them there and we were like, yeah, you are going to do this thing. I mean, they, were they did a good job. I'll give them that. Those those yeah. tunnels in California were hard, yeah. to, hard to build. Yeah, that's true. What did Mexicans ever do for us, though? Uh, I don't know. Awesome drugs, I guess. Uh, it's a little too awesome, I guess, if, you, if, you, if you believe. They brought it. cocaine to the Chinese so that they could that, take the railroads more quickly. You, you cracked the code. I did. All right. So, so let's start from the beginning. I know this is a review for most people at this point, but I just want to be complete. During the speech on Thursday night, Biden went on and on talking about everything but illegal immigration of course marjorie taylor green dressed up in a whole maga outfit wearing a pin that says or a shirt that says say her name a pin that says lake and riley At, when biden is walking in to go to the podium marjorie taylor green is already kind of heckling him and giving giving out a pin or giving him a pin that says the name lake and riley on it. and biden takes it and says something like i know how to say her name the irony being <laughs> he doesn't know how to say her name he doesn't know yeah. uh but but they ha- so they have this banter to start. And then during the speech, she interrupts and she starts yelling at him to say Lake and Riley's name. And Joe Biden indulges and he goes off script and he acknowledges that, yes, Abraham Lincoln Riley was killed by an illegal. Lincoln, Lincoln Riley, an innocent young woman who was killed by an illegal. That's right. But how many of thousands of people being killed by legals? To her parents, I say, my heart goes out to you, having lost children myself. I understand. Okay. What, stop talking about Bo, you insane old man. <laughs> what do you know about your child getting murdered by an illegal immigrant? Uh, yeah, nothing. You know that, nothing that, about that. It's, there are so many points of insanity on this, but yes, of course we he, can't ever. If he was going to bring this up again. He should have said, I understand the loss of a child. He, it made it sound like he understand the mode of loss of a, of a child, which is not the same. Uh, yeah. Well, the, yeah. The idea that Bo's death, Bo had brain cancer. You know, it's an unfortunate natural development. And it, he it's, died in Iraq. Don't you know? I have that too. He was, he was shot up by. Islamic militants in Iraq, I've been told. But but yeah, the idea that because your son died, you know, in middle age, his 40s of brain cancer, that that's that's the same or you understand what it's like to have a 22 year old daughter just murdered by a guy who shouldn't be here. And that's and there are so many layers to how idiotic this is. 
Uh, Lincoln Riley, by the way, not her name, of course. Lincoln Riley is the coach of the USC football team, problem number one. Many have been eulogizing Lincoln Riley, the football coach, on Twitter over the weekend. And actually, um, I I looked because I thought, has Lincoln Riley indulged in that? Has the coach (laughs) tweeted, like, I'm not dead, you know, just to... Just to engage in the banter a little bit. He hasn't tweeted, so maybe he is dead, Lincoln Ryan. We need a welfare <laughs> check. But Pat McAfee, of course, the sports commentator on ESPN, he said on his show on Friday, I actually thought Lincoln Riley, the USC head coach, was dead. No. <laughs> when I saw this, I saw it trending on Twitter, Lincoln Riley, and I look and it was all these like pictures of him saying, I can't believe he's gone. And I thought he was dead because he must have not paid attention. Do you think to that me. that's what happened to Biden, that it, that that name got in his brain because of Lincoln Riley? Or do you think that it was just an unrelated gaffe? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think he just can't read. I think he can't speak clearly. Listen to the rest of the speech. He's slurring his way through it. I don't know. I thought he was remarkably composed, all things considered. Uh, if by like uh, how about this i'll meet you on energy which we'll get to later it's just this rage energy and speculation that maybe that was substance enhanced or something like that yeah. but uh th- it's it's not just the um the lincoln riley part of it and it's not just the bow part of it too it's also he says in this i uh, yeah, you know, she was killed by an illegal. There, I said it. But how many thousands are killed by legals? And there was some dispute or misunderstanding, confusion. Did he say killed by illegals or killed by legals? And it's kind of like that, uh, what was that piece of audio where like different people heard different things a few years ago? I forget exactly. Yeah. But it's kind of like if you if you prime your brain to hear illegals, I can hear it that way. If you, you prime, it, yeah. prime your brain to hear legals. When I heard it, I heard legals. And so I think that's what he said. But what he's saying, if that's what he meant, is, yeah, sure, she was killed by an illegal alien. But like, I don't know, hundreds of people are killed in Chicago and Baltimore and St. Louis by legals, as in legal res- like citizens, legal <laughs> residents, mean, people buddy? who people who don't have an illegal presence in this country. I hate to do an actually here, but like, does did he not realize that we're talking about per capita Although, well, if you compare to the black population, I'm sure per capita legals are not more violent and, or that much more violent. And whether whether the crime rate beyond the border crossing itself is higher or lower, the thing about illegal alien crime in this way, it's in addition to. OK, it's not right. just like part of the general population. It's it's added to it's in addition to and it's crime that none of us should have to accept because those people don't have a right they to be They don't have a right here, to be period. here. It's 100% preventable, whereas we have to deal with the black people in this country. So. Uh, well, there, there are criminals of, of, of all varieties, but uh, I'll take your point that there are... Um, they, there, there, are there are demographic trends, yes. Um, but zero illegal crime. We should have to tolerate zero illegal crime. That yeah, well, that, that's the point. There's, there's a legal distinction as in... Everybody who's a citizen, everybody who has a legal presence in this country has a right to be here. And to the extent that we live in a free country where we grant people the right to roam about and do what they wish, there is a certain amount of crime that will happen as a consequence. Yes. Right. But that doesn't mean that we invite anybody who we have no idea who the hell they are in here to commit crime whenever they wish. Those are two different things. And that's why I don't like that comparison. One is in addition to, and it's not a risk that we accept by law. The other is a risk that we accept by law because we recognize the rights of our citizens. Uh, yes. But okay, so so after the speech, um, the, the controversy, the controversy is obviously calling her Lincoln Riley and trying to explain away, uh, uh, trying trying to minimize the the event and try to give the impression that it's not that bad. There are other worse things happening for Democrats and progressives. The issue becomes that he said the word illegal. That's the problem. Nancy Pelosi was the first I saw to make this comment. She was on CNN after the speech breaking it down. And she said, um, well, Biden should have said illegal or shouldn't have said illegal. He should have said undocumented. But, you know, that's not a big deal. Give him a break. Now, you should have said undocumented, but that's not a big thing. Okay. What's the big thing? No, no, no. I was I I, I actually wasn't even going to ask about that. I was just going to ask more about the moment. But you do think that he should have said undocumented? That wasn't going to be my question. Well, we usually say undocumented. Uh Even the CNN people are surprised. Like, we definitely were not going to challenge you on the fact that he used (laughs) the word. Shut up. That he used the word uh, 
illegal, but okay, yeah. if you want to challenge him on that point, well, all right. Okay, that brings us to yesterday. Biden goes on MSNBC. He's interviewed by Jonathan Capehart. And upon challenge for using the term illegal, he acknowledges, yes, I regret using that word. You use the word illegal when talking about the man who allegedly killed um, uh, Lake and Riley. An undocumented person. And I shouldn't have used illegal. I should have, it's undocumented. And look, when I spoke about the difference between Trump and me, one of the things I talked about on the border was that his, the way he talks about vermin, the way he talks about these people polluting the blood. I talked about what I'm not going to do, what I won't do. I'm not going to treat any, any, any of these people with disrespect. Look, they built the what country. About the murderer. The reason our yeah. economy is growing. On, we have to control the border and, and more orderly flow. But I, I don't share his view at all. So you, you regret using that word? Yes. Illegals are the reason our economy is growing? What in the hell are you talking about? Yeah, because they're all uh, law-abiding citizens that are paying taxes. How what is we, he talking about? How could we ever have a growing economy without illegal immigration? Jeez. How many how many campaign ads can you cut up here? Saying Lincoln Riley is one. You could have stopped there, all right? And you would have minimized the damage. Downplaying the significance of the murder after that is another, but all right, heat of the moment. You said it. Move on. Now you go the completely unnecessary step of all but apologizing to the murderer himself. <laughs> And then Biden he should wash his feet, kiss and wash his feet. Yeah. Is, is he here? I'd like to give him a foot rub. I don't want him to be disrespected. And then he immediately pivots. Oh, you yeah. know, I, I feel bad that I disrespected him by calling him illegal. But in the, look how much disrespect Trump gives when he says that, uh, you know, illegal immigrants or immigrant, whatever. They're, they're poisoning the blood of this country and they're bad and this. Wrong turn, dude. I get people don't like Trump's rhetoric. I understand that as a political truth. Yeah, but now is not the time. If you ask them what they hate more, and when I say that, I mean like the American population overall, not progressive extremists. I mean yeah. like the average American. Yeah, maybe you don't like Trump. Maybe you think he's too hyperbolic or mean with the stuff he says. But what do you hate more? Do you hate I don't know, Trump's mean words, or do you hate your neighbors getting murdered by illegals and then the illegals getting apologized to? And yeah. reasonable people are going to say the latter. I don't like the latter very much. Yeah, but people on the left are not reasonable. But you don't have to win them to win the election. Of At course. least uh, you don't have to you don't have to win them in any significant number. And that interview was <laughs> politically was just an absolutely brutal moment for Joe Biden. We're going to appear more concerned with how we describe the killer than than we are with the killer himself. But I, I must be the idiot. He's going to prove me wrong and he's going to break his own record. He's going to get 81 and a half million votes this time. 82 million votes. He's going to break his own record because people love this. Yeah. We're all supposed to believe. I mean, my, I get he went off script the first time. Who who is there an advisor behind the... Who's responsible for what he just said on MSNBC? He Is probably that has 40 advisors. <laughs> but like there's some degree of having to let him loose to interact with the media. Otherwise, it's just going to be too obvious that he um, can't conduct his that he can't conduct himself in any way. Like he has to do some interviews, right? Yeah, I guess there is kind of a, a catch 22 there that if you as the incumbent president, the basement routine just hiding is probably not going to work very well. So he has yeah. to go out and and challenge the ideas that the challenge, the perception that he's not with it and he's too old, but he isn't uh, with it and he is too old. And he is Can too you old, get this? Right. Oh man. So they have to do minimal, uh, you know, press events and things like that. But, but still, once they let him off the leash, you know that they're all back in there with their flasks. Like, all right, let's see how this goes. Let's <laughs> if see what I could here. watch the Biden campaign team watching this interview, they're and like, I'm half, uh. I half believe they think, great, good job. We don't yeah. want to demonize immigrants. That would be the worst possible. I, I halfway believe they think that was good because Probably, these people are so yeah. deranged. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, Lake and Riley, uh, her mom, we get a little bit of commentary from her mom that we discussed last week. She had made a Facebook post. Now she, she made a Facebook post that's a little more political. She had said that this is an unavoidable tragedy that happened to her daughter, but then she met with Trump over the weekend too, backstage at, uh, at one of his campaign rallies. So what did she say? 
And she posted on social media, Biden does not even know my child's name. It's pathetic. You're going to say your name even when forced to do so. At least say it right. Um, and then Trump was, uh, he did a, a Rome rally and he met privately with the parents and he called the suspect an animal and a monster and with other Republicans argued that of course, Riley would still be alive if there were tougher immigration restrictions. Um, and he had previously spoken to them on the phone, I believe. So this was actually not their first interaction. Is that, uh, do you know who the guy on the left is? Is that her dad? I don't know what you have up right now. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, I guess you don't have the, the photo in front of you. I'm looking at a, um, a photo of Trump with Lincoln Riley's mom. And then there's a guy on the left wearing a MAGA hat. I think that might be her dad. Like if her dad is just straight up wearing a MAGA hat now. I do not know. Uh, could be. Someone fact check me on that on who that gentleman is. But uh, okay. So... He uh, Trump called him a monster and an animal. You say mm-hmm. how uh, yeah. that, I mean, that's the real tragedy here. That's horrible. I, I, I mean, can't, I'm offended. I can't believe it. Uh, it, it th- that was so insane. All of this stuff with Lincoln Riley was so insane that, that, uh, that, that arresting and charging a gold star father of a Marine who was killed in Afghanistan. Thanks to Joe Biden is kind of a secondary story. That's yeah, like a really. forgot about in terms of how big of a disaster this speech was. Uh, Biden was talking about halfway through the speech uh, about you know how safe everything is. He's made everything safer. Crime rates are going down. Don't worry. Everything's awesome. And Steve Nakui starts yelling at him from the seats on the upper level. And he's saying his son's name. And he's saying, remember Abby Gate? Abby Gate was the site of the Kabul airport suicide bombing course during biden's uh, botched afghanistan withdrawal in 2021 steve's son marine corps lance corporal kareem nakui was killed in that attack and steve nakui has previously told reporters he considers biden to be directly responsible for his son's death nakui was a guest of republican congressman brian mast and here was the moment that he interrupted the speech and america is safer today than when i took office Year before I took office, murder rates went up 30 percent. 30 percent they went up. The biggest increase in history. It was then, through no, through my American Rescue Plan, which every American voted against. I'm mad at. Every American voted against. It. <laughs> Every Republican voted against it, but that might be every American. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> In the context of the Democrat Party, I guess. Now, in fairness, Biden was not able to hear him. If Biden was able to hear him, he would have yelled, I know exactly what it's like because Bo was killed at the Kabul airport, too. <laughs> yeah. You and I are the same. I know. <laughs> the controversy here isn't just the Afghanistan disaster, of course. It's the treatment of uh, Steve Nakui. And I get it. You can't heckle. And if you do heckle, you're going to be escorted out. And he was. Fair enough. I'm not saying he has a right to stand there and just yell the whole time, even though, you know, he, he's a, a victim of a terrible situation. He was arrested for a misdemeanor, crowding, obstructing or incommoding. Um, it comes with a, a $50 fine release after payment. Or if this was January 6th, you know, a decade in prison and he'll rot in hell if it had happened on that particular date. But it didn't. So he paid the $50 fine and he went to dinner with fellow Gold Star families in D.C., and I thought that was uh, that was kind of it, but it actually does remain possible that he faces more serious consequences because the fifty dollars is actually just bail, and the prospect of a five hundred dollar fine or jail time remains. Now that's probably not likely to happen. House Republicans are calling for that charge against him just to be dropped outright. <laughs> But these are the same people who thought it'd be a good idea for Biden to go on TV and say, now, now, don't use the word illegal. Remember, the illegals built this country. We have to be respectful. Merrick Garland will come out tomorrow and throw the book at this guy and try to put a gold star dad in prison for the high crime of interrupting his highness, Joe Biden. I, I joke, of course, I'm not expecting that. But like, would that be as shocking as it as it should be if uh, if it actually happened? No. Perfectly hilarious. Uh, and of course, none of these things are hilarious. Like th- this is a guy who's, whose son made the ultimate sacrifice. This is a terribly tragic story. And um, 
And, and, and there's no apology, you know, like Biden doesn't give a rat's ass about that. In fact, he's very proud of it. Um, the whole thing is just awful. And, and we just kind of move on. Like we, we unnecessarily got those guys killed that day for no reason other than Joe Biden wanted to have some victory parade on September 11th or some kind of bullshit. And there's never been any serious accountability or any serious responsibility taken for that. I understand mistakes happen. I understand war is hell. I understand all of that. But when you botch something that bad, doesn't somebody get fired? Isn't there any accountability? None. No. There has been none. There's no accountability. I mean, that that is the reason that there is such um, a, a chasm between the feelings of the American public and the government at large. Because everybody's yeah. like watching this stuff unfold and nobody has any accountability. There are no repercussions. And it pisses people off. This is when people in, in the general public start going crazy and doing crazy tread stuff. I, I understand that Joe Biden was not asked directly to compare them. So maybe my premise here is slightly unfair. But I think I think it's reasonable to observe that Joe Biden had nicer things to say or greater concern for the illegal who murdered Lincoln sure. Riley yeah. than, go, than his Gold Star father. Yeah. Or than than his son, or anybody else who's who's made a sincere sacrifice for this country. Just don't be. I mean, what really though? It's like what, what did this guy's marine son do? He didn't build the country. He didn't build the country like an illegal immigrant. We have to put these things in in context. And uh, let's see. Should we take a break now, or should we uh, should we carry on? I got to talk about about all the abortion stuff at the speech too. But that's going to take a minute. Let's carry on. Okay, we'll take a late break. And thank you guys. Uh, thanks to the chatters. Appreciate your support for the show. We will get to that. After we talk about the other heroes of this country, the other heroes of this country are the brave women who get abortions. Multiple abortions. If you, if you pay attention to the order of the topics in the speech, you understand this was really a campaign speech. It's not really a, a speech about the country. You can see it's it's a speech that's about Democrat campaign priorities and what Democrats are going to run on in 2024. It's going to be Putin, January 6th, and abortion in that yeah, order. Of course, yeah. Because no freedom is more important, more cherished than the supposed freedom to murder your children in utero. And I'm not even saying that sarcastically. That is a, a true fact about our country, that a massive portion of the electorate cares more about the supposed freedom to murder babies than they do about actual rights or their finances or the overall well-being of their country. This is for a huge segment of the country, like if not issue one, top three, oh, which, sure. uh, yeah. you know, means we got a lot of persuasion to do. And I say that as someone who has been persuaded on this issue myself. Um, so Democrats don't just run on it because they want to kill babies, though they do. They run on it because it is a political winner in our degenerate country. And so Biden's guest of honor is Kate Cox. And you may remember Kate Cox from a few months ago. She said that her life was at risk because if she carried her baby to term, uh, well, her life was going to be at risk in that because that baby had a, a genetic abnormality. And Texas wouldn't let her get an abortion. So she had to flee to another state to get that abortion. And so because she got that abortion, we all owe her honor and praise for completing that particular murder quest. Joining us tonight is Kate Cox, a wife and mother from Dallas. She's become pregnant again and had a fetus of a fatal condition. Her doctor told Kate that her own life and her ability to have children in the future were at risk if she didn't act. Because Texas law banned her ability to act, Kate and her husband had to leave the state to get what she needed. Are you just cringing at the delivery there? <laughs> it was all? so bad. Yeah. Um, what Do you know what state they had to go to? I don't know what state she got the abortion in. Uh, in. And my understanding is she has had the abortion at this point. Yeah. Oh, she's, he said she's pregnant again. Didn't he? I think he meant was pregnant again, or may maybe he does mean pregnant now. I don't know. He might mean I mean, now. so what? You had to take, you had to fly an hour from like Dallas to the horror Albuquerque or whatever the fuck. I, yeah. I mean, on, and, and it's all a bunch of lies, but like the entire, the entire premise in several ways is a lie. Uh, Texas law does not ban the ability to act in cases where there is a threat to the life of the mother. It actually allows abortion in that case. 
And take- how does trisomy pose trisomy 18, which is the condition that her uh, her fetus had? How does that pose a risk to the mother? It doesn't. And that's not me saying it. It is her doctor, according to the Texas Supreme Court decision that said, no, you don't have an exemption in this case because your doctor won't testify that your life is at risk. Her doctor wouldn't do that. Kate Cox tried to sue the attorney general of the state, or or, or I forget who the target of the suit was, but she's the one who brought the lawsuit. We act Mm -hmm. like she wanted an abortion and the state of Texas went, no, ah, ha, 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 and smothered her with their cowboy hat, shot her with their (laughs) revolver. She... She brought legal action against the state to get uh, the the court to intervene to preemptively allow her abortion before the facts had even been assessed. And she lost in that. And her doctor, her doctor acknowledged the condition of the baby. As you mentioned, trisomy 18, Edwards syndrome, otherwise known as. Um, But that's gnarly. It is. It is. And I, I, I don't dispute that. Neither did the court. But her doctor would not say that her life was at risk. So that's just a straight up lie from Biden. Um, and they also said that Kate Cox's future fertility was at risk. Uh, that wow. was also not demonstrated. Yeah. And if you're right in understanding that she's pregnant again, that seems, well, I guess she's pregnant again because of the abortion. That's what mm-hmm. we're, we're supposed to believe. But this trisomy 18, it's an extra copy of a chromosome in uh, some or uh, extra copy of chromosome 18 in some or all of the body's cells. And most pregnancies with trisomy 18 end in miscarriage or stillbirth. Mm-hmm. Of those that survive to the third trimester, about 40% die during labor. Of those that survive birth, only about 10% survive their first year of life. So was this baby's outlook good? Absolutely not. Does that mean it's okay to kill the baby? Well, I would argue no. The state of Texas would say no. You know, maybe you have a different view on that, but that that's a point I want to address in a moment. I will note, and this is anecdotal, but it doesn't erase the value of this individual's life. Uh, Rick Santorum, soothsayer Rick Santorum, who I once thought was a crazy man, but turned out to be a wise man among fools about a decade ago. Uh, He has a daughter with trisomy, born with trisomy 18. A daughter is about to turn 16 years old. And so, you know. What a nightmare. So it's 10% of those that make it to birth. Right. So that's got to be like fewer than 1% of pregnancies. It's a small number. Yeah. It's it's significantly smaller than 10% of the overall pregnancies. I don't know. I'm pro-life and I'm still of two minds about this. So. Well, let me um, indulge that perspective. Well, first of all, do you want to argue the case as to why there should be a right to abort this, this pregnancy. Do I want to argue the case? I mean, no, in this situation, I would not have an abortion. Um, but it's not because of the, the morality of the abortion question. I just don't think that I could live with the guilt or doubt that maybe they were wrong or yeah. something like that. Like I know myself, I, I don't know that I'd be able to live with myself if I had an abortion for basically any reason. Absolutely. Um, that being said, the compassion that I have for women that have chosen to terminate a pregnancy in this situation, like I am not judgmental about it. That is a fucking nightmare for parents. And I'm sure that many a woman has decided to terminate a pregnancy, a trisomy 18 pregnancy with the heaviest heart and out of compassion for the suffering that they think that their child is going to have in their lives. And I think that's a legitimate argument. I, I really do. Now, I, I can hear what you're saying there. And I will also say that Kate Cox is associated with a variety of activists who do not give two shits about what you're saying and that just want to murder babies. That is absolutely true. 100%. Um, yeah. so, there's, so there's that too. Uh, but I, I certainly take your point. Look, if, if, if uh, God forbid, a future pregnancy with my wife is complicated in such a way, it will be devastating no doubt oh yeah and yeah. and the prospect of losing a child in that way devastating terrible but Absolutely i also know yeah. that if i made the active decision to end that child's life it would be so much harder than allowing that child to have a natural death even if the natural death is all but guaranteed you and, and why true. is that that's true and i think that what you just said is important did you just say it would be a tragedy or something what did you say well it's it's devastating either devastating way devastating is what you said but, but no, it's, no, but that's, it's more that's devastating when you know that you did it you chose it totally, it wasn't totally. a natural development but even in the in the case of having an abortion for trisomy 18 like i think that the problem that i have with this 
is that the abortion is not being treated as the tragedy that it is. This is a devastating thing that happened to this family. It needs to be treated with reverence and sadness and not propped up uh, for political points, especially uplifting a group that, like like you said, does not give a shit about babies in general. Like, yeah. and, and most abortions are elective. We've talked about these statistics just ad nauseum, but over 99% of abortions are elective for reasons like sex selection, finance, uh, you bang the wrong guy. It's not the right time in your life or whatever the fuck. Like these situations in terms of uh, general abortions are, they represent a tiny fraction of abortions, tiny fraction. Yeah. And I, and I, I understand the perspective that you're offering. And I, while I don't agree with it, I can understand how people would want to protect the right to that, the, the right. I'm going to use that term, but I don't know that there is such a want to protect an abortion in such circumstances in their state. Okay. I don't agree with that, but I get it. I get where you're Mm -hmm. coming from. The question is though, why does all of that? There's, there's the question of the inherent morality of it. And then there's the question of the political solution. And you're going to have to answer, why doesn't Texas have the right to decide that issue for itself? For themselves. Right. Because yeah, Exactly. Yeah. As you mentioned, the supposed horror here. Oh, Kate Cox had to leave the state of Texas to kill her kid. Well, the actual horror is she killed her kid. That's yeah. the horror. Yeah. But why should Texas be denied their own political control over that issue? If you don't like how Texas handles the issue of two options, number one, work to change the law in Texas or number two, leave Texas. And people yeah. leave states all the time in pursuit of, politics they uh prefer in other places that we for some yeah. reason in this one context like you don't like the tax structure in your state it sucks leave go to another state for even st- if vast swaths of the country uh sided in the same way like the american south or whatever all made abortion illegal you know just you would just have to take a longer flight to another state because there are some states that are never going to do that ever 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 maybe well yeah and and i know obviously people have a Big problem with that, too, that, you know, maybe you want a federal abortion ban. You don't want any of this stuff available anywhere because fundamentally it is murder. And I understand that perspective as well. And, you know, that's a separate debate about police powers within states and, and all of that. But my point here is that leaving Texas for your preferences elsewhere, that's not a problem in any other political context. It, that's a feature of federalism. In fact, that's a that is. The That's point. the system we want. If you don't like the legal structure in your state, you always reserve the right to leave and go to another place. And you always have the right to change, at least to try to change the law in your state. But that brings us to Joe Biden. Threatening, I think, is probably like a, a little bit too strong of a word, but it was bizarre to go after the Supreme Court to their faces in this way. And and Biden made this attack to the justices during the speech. The justices are, are sitting right in front of him. And somehow Joe Biden thinks it's an own to quote their own decision in the, the Dobbs decision that overturned Roe v. Wade. Like you guys said in the decision, quote this. Well, look out because that's going to happen. Right. They were aware of that when they, yeah. were, they wrote in the decision. He said during the speech, um, well, you guys, you guys said women have power. Well, you better watch out because you're going to find out about that. And they said the same thing in a campaign speech over the weekend. And with all due respect, justices, women are not without electoral, electoral power. Uh, excuse me, electoral or political power. You're about to realize just how much you were right about that. In its decision to overturn Roe v. Wade, the Supreme Court majority wrote, and I quote, women are not without electoral or political power. As I said, the State of the Union, they ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> Women are not without electrical power. They'll electrocute you for this. <laughs> uh, all right. But correct. Yeah, voters can decide this issue for themselves in their own states, which is the correct constitutional application because the Constitution is silent on the issue of, the, of abortion. That's the decision. The justices do not oppose women deciding the issue for themselves. That's what the decision does. It is Biden and the rest of the baby harvesting industry that want to remove that decision from voters. Oh, man, you're going to see when women vote. Well, number one, half of women don't agree with you. They're pro-life. Number two, Mm -hmm. yes. Half of women are pro-life. Well, maybe a little less than half. I was looking at some polling earlier today. And it depends how you phrase the question. Like, a lot of people are in the middle. Sometimes certain circumstances. And then there's like a third on either side, never legal, always legal. 
So it depends how you, how you cut it. But there's a significant portion of women who do not agree with Joe Biden at all on this issue, but he claims yeah. to just represent them on mass. But number two, even if all women did agree with Joe Biden, yes, the Supreme Court says they should have a political say in that, that they should be able to vote in their states to decide this issue. People should vote on it. That's not an own. Dude. That's 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 the system working as intended yeah. as the justice has decided. Anyway, we're well past due for a break. Man, and how upsetting is that? You know, and, and she couldn't just I'm still thinking about this um, Cox thing. Um, she couldn't just be like listen this is a condition incompatible with life she had to go this the lie about it being a, a health to, a health issue for the mother no, of course like, this whole... is my problem with abortion it's like it's a stunt just say what you want to do here like it's inconvenient for you or there's something seriously wrong with the baby or whatever but i i hate this thing that they're doing where it's a threat to the fertility of the mother it's, it's a threat to the life of the mother or it's just a clump of cells like I want somebody on the left, like Camille P- P- Paglia does this. She's like, well, it is just killing the kid. Like, I appreciate the honesty. Made, yeah. Don't but, but just don't lie to me. Honesty. Yeah. Don't lie to me about what this is. How many women are having abortions when they're 16 at eight weeks because they think it's just a clump of cells and then they are 26 and they're getting married and they're like, what have I done? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what have and, I done? Cause they yeah. had some feminist mom or Planned Parenthood told them whatever. It's like there needs to be transparency and honesty about the nature of abortion. Yeah. Well, I, I only know a handful of people in my life who have had them. Uh, not a single one. I know it's anecdotal, but not a single one is like, oh, awesome. Best decision I ever made. Really, uh, you know, brought me to uh, to a future that wouldn't have been possible otherwise. The only people I hear saying things like that are deranged Hollywood celebrities like uh, what's her name? Bussy Phillips. Excellent. Like at the women's march. Busy folks, yeah. yeah. Whatever her name is. Yeah. Oh, look at the career I have. It's so great. It wouldn't have been no, possible. No, that was Michelle a... Williams, wasn't it? There, there are several of them. Yeah. <sighs> look at this. Look at these awesome movies I made. They're so much better than, you know, the kid that I killed to achieve. But that that's so much easier than doing what Abby Johnson has done. Oh, yeah. As far as like coming to terms with the fact that you made the decision to end the lives of your children. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I mean, it that, takes a really strong person to to do that and to be like, uh, I I did this thing. I need forgiveness from yeah. God, and I feel great shame and guilt for it, and then uh, prevent other women from doing this. I don't thing. know how you get over it, and and I hope I never go through the experience of losing a child, because I can only imagine how painful that is. But I don't know how you get over the idea that I made the decision to lose that child. I made the decision you, to you kill ask that child. for forgiveness. You, I mean. And yeah. it, in, in the people that I know that have had abortions, they're especially the ones that are that are very religious now. They're like, listen, I uh, I believe that God forgives us for things that we truly repent for. And then they just they just live with their with their sadness, with their deep sadness. And I think that's the only way to deal with it outside of becoming a deranged leftist and trying to believe that what you did was yeah, not wrong. Well, th- that is their entire lifestyle is convincing themselves forcefully that two plus two equals five. And that's yeah. just one episode of it. But uh, let's get some uh, some chats over on Rumble. Yakko, 1977, the State of the Union address had 18% higher ratings from last year. I'm certain his approval rating is not the cause, but rather morbid curiosity about what the dementia angled, uh, addled, sorry, dementia addled, angry old man was going to rant about. I didn't see the ratings numbers, but I could believe it. I, I usually don't watch the um, the State of the Union in full. But I did for the reasons had to this year. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I I, I had to check it out. Uh, Thank you, Yakko. Tom Paulin, uh, 787. Hello, Matt and Blonde. Made a dream of mine come true last Monday. Bought a 22 Model 3 long range for $21,000 all in as an auto technician and car guy. Uh, I absolutely love it. And I hope the speed. Is, okay. F- first of all, I read this as a gun initially. So you're, you're talking about, ca- okay, okay, okay. 22, uh, and 2022 Tesla model three. I was like oh, reading okay. this, like what, what is it? A 22 caliber model three. What are we talking about here? Uh, that's me being an idiot. You're talking about buying a Tesla. So congratulations. Uh, I'm glad to hear you love the car and, and thanks for supporting the show. Um, and sorry for mixing that up. I, my mind thinks about guns instead of cars, clearly. Um, all right. 
we are good on D Live. We're good on Odyssey. Let's let's check in on uh, YouTube and Tippy. Um, did we miss this? Oh, this whole bit. Hold on. What whole? I think bit? We missed some stuff in the. It's okay. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Uh, Sergeant Snow Ape says, "Ape salute, rest in peace, Akira Toriyama." Uh, he's that anime guy that died. Oh, anime guy. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know very much about him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that, but I am. I also know almost nothing about that. Uh, but thank you for the news to fellow snow apes. We appreciate it. Yep. Um, Boogeyman917 says, I doubt it. Laurel says, by the way, most immigration attorneys say unlawfully present immigrant. I doubt it. I, I believe Laurel on that. that. I just want to acknowledge Boogeyman. Yeah. Uh, unlawfully present immigrant is is probably i mean that's about as correct it's about as pc as you're going to get while still being correct on the description yeah Yeah, well laurel i know you have some immigration um law expertise of course so if you understand like if you can inform me how illegal immigrants built this country i would be i I I must be missing something (laughs) yeah really everyone Um, built this country except for you know the the usual problem people the straight white men of course who remember when um elizabeth warren said like black trans women built are the she didn't say built this country she said are the foundation of this country or something to that let me let me find it get the quote right if you want to keep going um injured guardian i'm just gonna say it after the rust death someone should have taken alec baldwin by the scruff of his neck and yelled you're a grown man any gun you ever pick up is your responsibility yes (laughs) <laughs> yeah, maybe. I'm gonna blame this girl in her 20s. Uh, Anna Gutierrez Reed looked like pretty good. She did something with her hair. She looked like she kind of maybe slimmed down a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> like, uh, yeah, maybe it was the stress. She she yeah. smoked more cigarettes because she's so stressed out. <laughs> Whatever she's doing, she's, yeah, it's working well. Mojack, she's, well, I notice it's you know what it probably is. She had to look respectable, so she she shows up for court without the multicolored hair. First of all, yeah. she had like a normal hair color. That goes She looked way. normal, like a normal girl. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Elizabeth Warren in 2019 tweeted, black trans and cis women, gender non-conforming and non-binary people are the backbone of our democracy. That's what it was. Perfect. That's what would we have done so without perfect sense. black trans, gender non-conforming, non-binary people? Jeez. Mojack420, going to wait to listen tomorrow morning. Did I just read this? No, I no. don't think so. I have a great show. They aren't migrants. They're just criminal illegal. <laughs> yeah. And even migrant, like, and I'm guilty of using that, that word. And I, I know I use that word and I think it's just for convenience. Like the, the full description, not that I'm disputing it, criminal illegal aliens. I don't dispute that at all. Yeah. Um, well, tech, technically, actually, actually crossing the border is a civil offense. It's not a criminal offense. <sighs> You know, I mean, that's true, but they are illegal aliens. And so I don't dispute that. But I, I, I use the migrant word and I think it's like it must just be convenience. And maybe I shouldn't do that. To think more uh, carefully. Das Pooch. Blonde not liking what effectively is right wing death squad. The movie is absolutely ridiculous. I smell the stench of contrarianism. The one <laughs> excessive Defoe scene is the only bad point. That's it. Yeah, but right wing themes in movies are not as appealing to me as you would, as you would think. I have like a, a much greater ability than most people on the right to ignore propaganda in film and stuff, because I feel like more art comes out of the left. And so I'm like, okay, if, as as long as some like baseline threshold that I have isn't surpassed, I'm pretty tolerant. It's hard. You can tell I liked this movie and I'll explain why. But even when I like movies, even when they're you know 20 plus years old and I feel like they're less a product of propaganda interests, I still have that reaction. Maybe you're describing, I don't know, where it's like, yeah, I like this, but why do they want me to like this? There must be some yeah. nefarious reason. They must be trying to get me. Uh, yeah, I try to yeah. shed that if I can't put my finger on it. But We talked about The Wire a few times, right? But sometimes people on the left, and this is not the case in this movie, but this is just an example, but sometimes people on the left um, they have this accidental self-awareness. Well, it's not really self-awareness, but accidental awareness of certain issues. So like the wire showed, um, a much greater truth about racial interests and interactions and everything like that. Um, and the guy that wrote it was, I think it was like a leftist Jewish journalist. And then this also happened in that series that I just watched that Lena Dunham series girls. 
which I liked. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> you, you liked. That's right. But for all the wrong, it, it, you, your your explanation was because it accidentally demonstrates truths, right? But but they're true, so it doesn't yeah, matter yeah. how they're demonstrated. Like yeah. it really captured millennial narcissism because it was written by a millennial narcissist. And it, it has these train wreck women, and it perfectly describes how feminism destroys the life of the lives you of young suck, women. You suck, fuck you. That's for um, promoting Elena Dunham products. It's obligatory. I don't know what to tell you. Girls is a hilarious uh, snippet into the mind of an urbanite millennial feminist. It's hmm. it's just hilarious. Uh, Ryan Haas, um, only going to stay until the Nikki Haley send off. Got to wake up early tomorrow. I'll catch the replay. Thanks for the great content, Thank you, though. Catching the important and things. And I think Ryan was one of the people who asked me on Wednesday, hey, where is it? So I hope I delivered. <laughs> Thank you, man. Uh, obscenely excited for your new video, Blonde. Cheers, you too. I don't know that anybody should be excited. If it's about sudden infant death. So um, I'm should we curious about that topic. I think it's an interesting. Yeah, I, I want to hear more about it. I don't know much about it medically, so I'll check it out. You will. <laughs> I, yeah, I have that to look forward to. I uh, want to circle back. Yeah, we will come back to your chats at the end of the stream. And once again, I am guilty of preparing far um, too I'll much. I'll have to just circle back with you for a show. So I'm going to have to pick up the pace. But I got more to say about the State of the Union. Okay. I, oh, good. Okay, you split it right here. I was thinking that that we skipped all these topics. I was about to freak out about it. Okay. Wait, what topics? Did we skip something? No, I thought that I thought that um, you accidentally skipped all of these topics uh, after about the State of the Union. Oh, no, no, no. I was just planning to come okay. back to it. But okay. by, uh, I'll be quick on this. This is a usual lie thing. But I thought the math on this was really interesting. Biden is always going to talk. Oh, we're gonna, we can tax the rich. That's how we'll get our uh, way, get our country out of this uh, financial mess. He said there are a thousand billionaires in the country. They only pay an average of eight percent federal income tax. And I didn't know. I mean, that's one of those things that's like, I know that's bullshit without knowing that's bullshit. Okay. His claim was if we tax billionaires at 25% minimum tax rate, we'll raise over $500 billion over the next decade. All our financial problems will be solved. Even PolitiFact can't back up this, this claim. They rate it as outright false even. I don't know why they didn't, didn't give it their worst rating of pants on fire, but okay. PolitiFact notes that the top 1% of taxpayers currently pay an, an effective tax rate, um, uh, higher than than his 8% figure, obviously, on income that the federal government counts, which, of course, he, he's getting this 8% rate by counting all sorts of things as taxable when they are not, in fact, taxable. So the 8% rate he's referencing is based on a hypothetical calculation. That's not a reflection of current law. The calculation is under the premise of taxing unrealized gains on stocks or other assets or other investments. So you buy you buy a share of stock, excuse me, Value is 25 bucks. You sit on it for a couple of years. Now the value is 40 bucks, 50 bucks. You never sell it. It's still just sitting in your account. Biden wants to tax you on those gains, even though you didn't sell, which doesn't make any sense. I, I don't, I do I get a tax yeah, credit when you? I have unrealized losses? Yeah. No, no of no, course not. Of course not. Uh, so um, the, the it's whole such concept bullshit. Of, it's yeah. not even money. Yeah. It's <laughs> a, the only way you can get this 8% figure, in other words, is if you are counting non-liquid assets in the taxable wealth of these people. But let's say we do what Biden wants. like we, We're just going to tax all these non-liquid assets and unrealized gains. It means next to nothing compared to government spending because, oh, wow, yeah. we're going to raise $50 billion a year. First of all, no, we're not because these people are going to protect their assets and or leave. So you're not going to get your $50 billion a year. But even if we did... We are currently adding $3 trillion in debt each year. That is $3,000 billion, in other words, every year. So this genius thinks that if we get a mere $50 billion compared to the $3,000 billion, <laughs> that somehow is proud. Like we're going to have everything paid off. It's one point. His tax plan, which isn't going to work and is made up nonsense, would cover 1.7% of the debt that we're adding each year year and that's if we cap our spending if we get it under control we don't increase it anymore we just keep it at status quo so as always if you want to fix the deficit or our debt the only solution is to start cutting and it's not with a scalpel it's not with an axe or it's not with a scalpel rather it is with an axe it's with a wrecking ball yeah you know? <laughs> so we need we need bombs to the federal budget that's what we need to do uh and then <laughs> 
This was my favorite moment in all of it. But again, like who's advising him of this? He did that pre Super Bowl message um, where he said, oh, I love the Super Bowl, but these dang snacks are so expensive. I'm going to crack down <laughs> on big snack. He did it again. Hey, we all got to support Senator Bob Casey's bill to make sure that Frito Lay is compelled to give you a full bag of chips or, you know, whatever nonsense. Raise prices to pad the profits. Charging more and more for less and less. That's why it's cracking down on corporations engaged in price gouging and deceptive pricing from food to health care to housing. In fact, the snack companies think you won't notice if they change the size of the bag and put a hell of a lot fewer. <laughs> same, same size bag. They're not laughing put with fewer you. fewer chips in it. No, I'm They're not joking. Laugh. It's called shrinkflation. <laughs> Pass Bobby Casey's bill and stop this. You probably all saw that commercial on Snickers bars. You get to charge the same amount and you got about, I don't know, 10% fewer Snickers in it. Yeah. Well, who's responsible for this, buddy? Action meet consequence. Uh, you know, you, you, you limit supply and you print a bunch of funny money and you have less of that supply and more dollars chasing it. You get increased costs. So if you're mad at big Snicker or big Dorito, well, the reason the prices are increasing is because big corn and big peanut and big nougat also <laughs> have increased costs. <laughs> like it, 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 to believe this, these people and uh, like progressives actually believe this. They believe that corporations got together in some secret backroom meeting and they're like, oh, hey, they don't I, believe this. We, we got I realized we could all join in greed. Would you like to join our greed pact? And not one of them, not one is like, hey, I could undercut them and produce this same product at a lower price yeah. and cash in. And strike it rich. No, the reason that they don't produce the same product at a lower price is because you can't. They can't. You can't get the supplies. You can't get the labor at those costs, at at those prices. The final step here is price controls. And when you get price controls, what you get is the end to production. Because if you tell the producer, you're not allowed to profit off your product. Guess what? They just stop making the product. Nobody is going to make stuff to break even or take a loss. That's not how any of this works. And if you're curious about um, Bob, Bob Casey's bill, that's more or less exactly what it's getting at. It's called the shrinkflation prevention act. The bill would direct the FTC, the federal trade commission to establish shrinkflation as an unfair or deceptive trade practice and ban it. So it authorized the FTC to sue the companies that do it. It would also authorize state attorneys general to sue those companies too, because that's how we're going to get cheaper goods. We're going to sue the people who make the goods. We're going to sue them until they make them cheaper. Great plan. I can't wait to see how this works out. Look to Haiti, which we'll get to in a minute. (laughs) You want Haiti? This is how you get it. Uh, I'll be quick with this. I just thought it was really funny. Uh, Biden's week of gas. (laughs) He was caught on a hot mic after the speech talking about how He's uh, he's going to meet with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, and uh, he he's going to get Netanyahu under control. It's going to be a come to Jesus meeting. <laughs> with Netanyahu. Why does Mr. Netanyahu need a come to Jesus meeting? What are you hoping to achieve? I didn't say that in the speech. After the what speech. about after the speech? You guys eavesdropping on things. Quote. I told him, BB, and don't repeat this, but you and I are going to have a come to Jesus meeting. What do you mean by that? What I meant was, it's an expression used in the southern part of my state, meaning a serious meeting. And uh, it was, uh, I've known BB for 50 years, and he knew what I meant by it. Oh, man. Don't tell anyone this, but I'm going to tell that Jew to to believe in Jesus. I'm going to get him. (laughs) <laughs> I'm not offended by it. Obviously, I just think it's hilarious. And I, I actually think it demonstrates um, th- that the the administration, the White House is is considering this uncommitted vote and the rest of this Muslim pushback against Biden for his stance um, of continued support for Israel, that that's actually kind of getting to them. I don't think that Biden has had some realization that, oh, he's been dead wrong about Israel this whole time. I think he just sees that he's got to appease the Dearborn vote. And that's why there's yeah. going to be a come to Jesus meeting. Uh, especially for Michigan, which is going to be a crucial state for his reelection. Now, I mentioned there was some potential evidence that Biden was drugged up. Yeah. At least um, one psychiatrist says so. 
I kind of hate this because when this was happening with Trump, we were all like, this is bullshit, you know, about like his weight and all that. It's, it's true. Like, she's not... she's never seen him physically. So, you know, take yeah, but I, I there as somebody who has taken a lot of Adderall, I can definitely see. <laughs> I can definitely see how people came to this conclusion. I mean, he was like balls to the wall, super energy Biden. Um, anyway, the psychiatrist works with elderly dementia patients and said Biden exhibited signs of stimulant use to mask cognitive decline. Um, it is Dr. Carol Lieberman. She's Dr. Carol Lieberman, forensic psychiatrist based in Beverly Hills. Um, and she said, if you look at how Joe Biden is usually slow and stumbling compared to how he was during State of the Union, fiery and angry, these are signs that are typical for someone taking Adderall or any amphetamine. Um, and I thought that he was considerably less slurry than he normally is. What? Yeah. Well, I guess it depends on your benchmark. He was very slurry, though. But he talked a lot more. I suppose. He wasn't like answering questions like slowly and meandering it, this was this was the most i've ever seen of biden at one time probably they did decide to go with a long speech it was over an hour yeah the, a real risk there I, so how many minutes of slurring did he have in over an hour five minutes and then when he's well, doing his press conferences he's slurring something every other sentence i would just, say that e i i would him. bet comfortably that every minute in the speech had one slur and That's I don't mean, true, yeah. I wish it, I wish it was a racial slur. It would have been funnier. I mean, like he slurred his, you know, his speech. You get what I mean? He just, he just comes up there. No pants. and just says, Kaniga. <laughs> Let me everybody. tell you about the. <laughs> 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 now that's a speech. Oh boy. All right. Yeah. Uh, so no, I don't know. I mean, maybe he was on amphetamines. I can see it. No, you know what he was on? Chicken Parmesan. That's uh -huh, the White uh -huh, House explanation. Yeah. Carbo load. He Carbo -load, does before yeah. game day. He had chicken Parmesan. So just hopped up on chicken parm and pasta before uh, his performance. That's why. That's why he was so energized. Now, in fairness, I probably should have given more time to talk about the response from Katie Britt, the Republican senator from Alabama. Um, this this was a fumble, and I think this was this this was terrible too. Not um, not necessarily in content, though there is potentially one content problem, but in style. Uh, Katie Britt is the uh, the new senator from Alabama. This was a response that was something out of a, a you know high school, a tryout for a high school play, that sort of thing. But right now, the American dream has turned into a nightmare for so many families. The true unvarnished state of our union begins and ends with this. Our families are hurting. Our country can do better. And you don't have to look any further than the crisis at our southern border to see it. Yeah, okay. Uh, all the jokes are, at least they properly put this woman back in the kitchen. And there's a million women in the kitchen jokes. People are wondering, is that her real kitchen? Because it's so bare. There's not a lot of stuff there. And I'm a person yeah. who likes simplicity in my home decor. But it, it does look kind of bare, I got to admit. Yeah. Maybe it's fake. I don't know. It's I, a green screen. Yeah. The, the, the whole like emotional chick angle. I get it. You're going for like the scared suburban mom demographic. That's what we're trying well, to Well, she pick really up. nailed it. <laughs> Oscar perform. Will she get an award tonight? Tonight's the Oscars, right? What? Uh, I think it's going on like right now, isn't it? I didn't even know that. I don't pay attention to that stuff, but that's what my sources say. But it, it, it also doesn't help that if not a lie, there was something that was kind of misleading in the speech and sort of unnecessarily. So she told a story about a woman. She said, I talked to a woman who, who was sex trafficked by the cartels at the age of 12. And then she moved right into Biden's border crisis being a disgrace. It's despicable. It's almost entirely preventable. I'm not disputing her characterization of Biden's border policy as, as a disgrace and creating preventable, preventable problems. Of course, uh, it's just that the way this was presented is potentially misleading. Yeah. Uh, a guy named Jonathan Katz tracked down that story, did a TikTok video about it. Britt was talking about a woman that she met last year, January 2023, in Eagle Pass. Carla Jacinto Romero is a human trafficking survivor. But that happened sometime in the mid-2000s under Bush. It's not a story mm -hmm. that happened under Biden. Not that there aren't plenty of similar stories that happened under Biden and continue happening under Biden without his intervention. This one did not. 
And she was asked on Fox News this morning if she meant to give the impression that the story took place under Biden's term. And she said, no, I very clearly said I spoke with this woman who told me um, about when she was trafficked when she was 12. I didn't say teenager. I didn't say young woman. I said uh, a grown woman, she said, a woman when she was trafficked when she was under 12. So her point is, listen, I described her as a woman now and said in the speech that she was trafficked when she was 12. Any reasonable person would understand there's a gap in time there. And so I'm not assigning it to Biden. And I grant, like she didn't say it's Biden's fault. This woman was trafficked. You do have to, it's more of like a flow of the speech thing. You go from point A to point B. And she did that on purpose though. It's kind of implied that one is the cause of the other. Um, so, you know, is that a lie? I mean, the woman is real and her story is real, uh, but you, you, uh, I could certainly grant the point that, like, if you want to talk about trafficking and you want to blame Biden, there's, there's got to be a better example. Right. And if you think I'm being too hard on, on Katie Britt, well, consider this. Mitt Romney gave her his full endorsement earlier today. Katie Britt is Mitt Romney's vice presidential pick. He tweeted, and I don't even actually know exactly what he means by this because it's phrased so weirdly. He tweeted, in a good way, the delivery was over the top, out of character. Biden's, of course. Katie Britt's, too. The media overreaction to hers, not his, tells us who liberals fear most as VP nominee. Okay. They might be talking about it, too, because the speech was just not very good. They might just be criticizing a bad speech. Nobody fears this lady. I I hate... No, nobody is afraid of Katie Britt. Oh, no, not that. Please. Not that, yeah. She was picked to do this job, deliver the State of the Union response based on woman cred, based on suburban yeah. mom appeal. That's why. That's Plain why. and simple. That's the only reason, yeah. Picking a VP by the same metric would likewise be a mistake. But, you know, again, if you don't believe me, <laughs> Mitt Romney's kiss of death should convince you. Uh, oh, God, but what a disaster these people are. That's the end of all of my State of the Union thoughts. That's I probably went on and on about that too much. But there's so much that was as far as intrigue and content and things to mm-hmm. talk about. That's one of the more memorable State of the Unions. Um, well, that I can remember, I suppose, by definition. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Can you remember a more memorable one? Can I remember a more memorable speech? No, I can't. That, That's what that makes it memorable. Sounds like that sentence <laughs> makes no sense. Um, <laughs> no, can I you... Can you think of a of a state I, I of remember, that was that was more memorable? I remember things like Obama getting yelled at, "You lie!" And I remember there was some. Oh, that's right. There yeah, was, yeah, there was heckling with Trump, I think, too. But did George Bush get a shoe thrown at him? No, that wasn't the State of the Union. That was some Iraqi oh, okay. reporter or some Iraqi. Oh, and guy. the Nancy Pelosi ripping up. The, that's right. That was that was that was, that notable, was the memorable notable, Trump yeah. speech thing. Yeah, that's that's right. God, that was bullshit. I forgot about that. What a bitch, old bitch. Well, let's talk about Haiti. Uh, can we this is so funny <laughs> it's hol- watching a country devolve and people eat each other allegedly is just mm. hilarious I know I was watching a, a clip today while I was eating of an actual cannibal and I was just laughing about it and I was like wow the, the internet has destroyed my sense of <laughs> somehow humanity. I'm hungrier get me another I sandwich I was just, yeah, just and this, this guy hummus, yeah. and again this footage is alleged I'll link it in the show sources if you want to watch it the, the savagery is not just eating uh, uh, meat off of a human leg that is on an open flame. It's the fact that like, well, I, I don't know. To me, just ripping the meat off and eating it like that. This have, didn't have a comedy element. Have to you, you no Come decency? On. Get a fine roll. Get some pickles. Get some barbecue sauce. What are you, a psychopath? What are you, you, you eat a fellow guy's leg like a caveman? Yeah. What did I expect? Civilization here? Of course not. And again, I'll emphasize that footage is alleged. It, it Just like the Ukraine war stuff, it, it, it might be absolute bullshit. So I don't want to give the impression that it's 100% truthful. It's just stuff that's circulating about what is allegedly going on in Haiti right now. Although there are reporters saying that cannibalism is happening. But anyway, okay, let's flash back. Remember uh, 2018, <laughs> Trump called Haiti and several African nations, quote, shithole countries. <laughs> <laughs> that's the age, age- so well <laughs> everyone reacted saying no that's hateful haiti's awesome there's absolutely nothing shit holy about it at all people had t-shirts <laughs> yes i'll get to the t-shirts uh shit meat hole in haiti and actually it's worse than that because as i mentioned at least shit holes don't have cannibalism most of the time so 
again, as with anything we talk about here, you got to be careful with war zone reporting, war zone videos. It might be propaganda. Check your, you know, do your own research and fact check us. I don't mean to say that all of these things are for sure true. It's just what I'm seeing. Um, but I, I do know the bottom line here. The only solution is going to be more foreign aid to Haiti because we've, you know, we didn't Definitely. do enough. That's the problem. And Haitian refugees. We need more Karine Jean Pierre's yeah, exactly. to fix our country. Well, they, <laughs> they built our country. Sure. They destroyed their own, but they built ours. Yeah. That's what's important. And uh, man, devastate, just devastating news to the beneficiaries of the Haitian laundromat, but they have the Ukrainian laundromat to work with now. So I, I assume they'll get their money that way. Um, and, and maybe we already have U S military operations getting, um, getting our personnel out of the embassy in Port-au-Prince. So there might be some U S military involvement for peacekeeping purposes too, but it's been more than a week of widespread violence and chaos. Excuse me. With uh, Haitian Prime Minister Ariel Henry, he can't even return to the country. He's just hanging out in Puerto Rico. Because gangs of heavily armed men have surrounded and now control the capital, Port-au-Prince, and have all but overthrown the government. Estimates are the gangs control about 80% of the city. The Haitian Interior Ministry was burned down. There have been attacks on the airport. The airport is now closed. The main port is now closed. The country's national police force is on the edge of collapse. They've lost nearly 3,300 officers in the last three years. They all get hit by um, fire extinguishers. Very tragic. And uh, there are gunfights outside the presidential palace as well. There have been attempted breaches on the Ministry of Education and the Supreme Court. And in just the last year, 1,200 people have been killed and nearly 700 injured in gang violence. But remember, the United States has a unique gun violence problem. It's, it's, it only yeah. happens in this country. Haven't you heard? As a consequence of all the fighting, as you can imagine, food, water, fuel, and medical care are all in short supply, getting shorter. I assume that might be why I watched a video of a guy eating another guy, <laughs> if that's authentic to the location and time. As I mentioned, the U.S. Embassy got at least partially evacuated. U.S. Force, U.S. forces carried out an operation to add more security to the embassy and airlift non-essential personnel out of the country. But as always, remember, the government will protect you. Surrender your guns. Nobody needs an assault weapon. Uh, you know, th that, that's always the same. Oh, what are you going to do? You're going to use your AR to fight the government? Well, how about the roaming yeah. cannibal gangs? Can I, yeah, about use, that? Yeah. can I use this is a zombie apocalypse movie of people eating people <laughs> reportedly. Yeah. Can I have an AR to fight the cannibal gangs or is that unreasonable no. too? Unreasonable. And this coverage just can't help itself. I, I'm not a Haiti expert. Okay. I know a little bit about the country. So I'm trying to read as much as I can about it today. I stumble upon this coverage from the AP. What's going on in Haiti? Because I need a simple explanation for a guy with a simple understanding of the country. Well, it's easy to blame the latest spasm of violence in the West free, uh, the West first free black republic on longstanding poverty, the legacy of colonialism, widespread deforestation and European and U S interference, but Come it's, on. it's actually experts agree. It's actually actually Haitian rulers increasing dependence on street gangs. Oh, so Haitians are creating the Haitian problems. Thank you. Crazy. I thought it was the deforestation <laughs> Done by those European white meddlers that was behind. Definitely, that's definitely. Yeah. Thank you. I needed a simple. I thought it. I thought that's what the white guys chopped down too many trees. That was behind the cannibalism. Just a little more foreign aid will do the trick, though. Just you know, a few more bags of money. Definitely import more of these people into our country. That'll help. <laughs> you mentioned the T-shirts. Uh, shout out to the likes of Bill Maher, Conan O'Brien, Susan Sarandon, and others who are fighting Trump with their Haiti is great already t-shirts. I can't believe the charity money from the t-shirt sales didn't work. And Haiti remains, if not a shithole country, a country that is not great already. <laughs> oh man. Uh, and likewise, uh, there were a lot of think pieces in 2018 and beyond, you know, uh, about how ignorant you have to be to call Haiti a shithole. Cause it's actually a tropical paradise. Oh yeah. Beautiful. All, of these, Beautiful. all of these things aged uh, very poorly, obviously. 
And it's, it's very easy. I know, you know, we're making jokes about a situation that is terrible, obviously. And there's a lot of human suffering there. And I acknowledge that. And it's awful. And I don't want it in Haiti. I certainly don't want it in my country. But it is very easy as, uh, you know, to sit here from the northern part of the U.S. and laugh and be like, ha, 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 look at that ridiculousness. That could never happen here because X, Y, and Z. Now, I don't think it's likely to happen here. But if you look at the trajectory, you think of the the approaches of, number one, enabling criminals, and number two, burdening productivity. Well, you've got the recipe right there. When production stops and you're disarmed and criminals have control of everything around you. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if you're going to get cooking a leg on the open fire. In it the won't street. happen here. It, it's not going to happen here because there is a 40, an average IQ of 40 points higher in the United States. Yeah, but the refugees aren't here yet. Yeah, I know. I mean, we would have to take a lot of Haitians, um, yeah. a lot of Haitians. Uh, I mean, I, I understand where you're coming from, though. Like there, there is that threat of anarchy always looming in the United States. I mean, I'm not delusional that that's a definite possibility, especially as we take on more immigrants. Uh, but there is a, a hilarious factor here. It's like this, this was a French colony. And then they're like, no, get out of here, white people. And now they're barbecuing each other. It's like, okay, well, what, what the fuck do you people want? Oh, those do whiteies cut to down too you? many trees. That's the problem. Yeah. I mean, but what's the solution here? Like sometimes I'm like British paternalism, might have been onto something that these people need to be civilized and kept under the control of, of a clearly superior country and people and system. Um, otherwise it becomes our problem, but in the absence of globalism, this could happen. And like, we never would have to deal with any of it. Like if I knew that well, these people never could come to our country and I'd never have to deal with any other fucking problems, then like, do I care that they're eating each other? No. I I, obviously, I mean, I care about human suffering for its own sake, but am I going to pretend yeah, that this is obviously my responsibility to fix? Yeah. No, of course I, not. It's not. And I do. I like, mean, like I'm sad for the guy getting his leg eaten or whatever, but like, am I crying about oh, whatever. it? Whatever. <laughs> I mean, You're having real sad. Ilhan vibes right now. <laughs> Look, some people ate something. Okay. I don't <laughs> I don't care though. These, these are my people. These are not my people. And then they, they let their country go to shit. And I just don't have that much compassion. I just have a tiny amount of compassion and I have to use it on my children and to a lesser degree, my community. And then there's like nothing left for the rest of the world. Well, and, you ha- and if the world has any hope of prosperity for anything close to all, people have to do that. Nobody, or, to do that, no yeah. individual, no country can take care of the entire world. It has to be those countries and those peoples taking but care of themselves. But I do care about this. In so far as um, as this country is further destabilized, like these people are going to come to our country and screw it up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. More. Oh, yeah. They're going to build this country just like the illegal immigrants. Just so you we need to get a ruthless French colony installed. Well, again. This, that's the thing. Like, oh, clearly this is the cause of European colonialism. But the only solution is European colonialism. OK, I, mean, I know. I know. <laughs> Things are so bad that they're, that it's like is an orderly slave state might be a one up on what they're dealing with. Today. <laughs> Listen, I saw a gone with the wind. Okay, I would rather live with that nice big fat lady on the southern plantation than live in Port of Prince right now. I'm, I would. <laughs> yeah, I know, I would. Okay, well, um, that's all I have. To say. I know, I know you had a lot to say about Haiti, so I don't want to move on until you've had your had your fill. Uh, not Thank of the guy's leg of discussion that. of the of the topic. <laughs> Did you have anything else? No, I think I think I, okay. <laughs> I, think I got to everything. Yeah. All right, let's get to hoax hate, and this is a this is a different variety. I don't know what to think of this one. And now the nobody saw it happen, but it's totally a product of Trump's America hoax hate crime of the week. Oh, shit, it's backwards. You think they'll notice? This is a guy caught in the act and then confronted and then lying, saying he didn't do it, even though he was just recorded on video doing it. And I don't think I've ever seen someone sharpie a swastika onto someone else's groceries either. And that swastika is drawn incorrectly. Now we'll see on video, it was kind of done in haste. So maybe that's why. But the swastika arms are going all the wrong ways. Mark Nakagawa, that's a Nazi name, apparently. Mark Nakagawa 
is a former Methodist pastor, now president of the United Methodist Church, overseeing dozens of other UMC pastors. This incident actually happened in December, but it's just now being reported. This is in West Hollywood. Mark is neighbors with a Jewish mother named Leah Grossman. Leah Grossman had groceries, I guess, either delivered to her house or maybe she was in the process of bringing the groceries into her home. I'm not sure. But whatever's going on, there are groceries at her door and she's got a camera on her door. And this retired pastor walks up and draws this swastika on her box of seltzer water. And then she confronts him because he was just caught on her her door cam. And he denies any involvement or any knowledge of what's going on. So there he is getting the box of seltzer water with the Sharpie swastika and she opens the door and comes out. Is there a problem? What? Is there a problem? No. Is that a Nazi thing? No. What is that? I'm just walking by here. I don't know. I saw you. Hmm? I have a camera. Like, what is that? What did you draw there? I don't know. Well, can you tell me what that shape is? Mm-mm. You can't tell me what that shape is? No. <laughs> I have well, no camera. I mean, I know you did. I don't know see you later. About it. See, I told you. Remember what I said? Fucking mafia. <laughs> okay. The, the question is, is this a, a hoax or does this guy actually, Nuh-uh. I, I, I don't know what to think of this. Grossman says the two had a prior disagreement. She says that Nakagawa called her a fascist in a homeowners association meeting after she hung up an, an Israeli flag on her balcony following the October 7th attack. Nakagawa says the opposite. He says, no way, man. She called me a fascist. So they have some kind of, um, dispute between them is that this pre-exist. japanese guy being a total jew to this jewish woman is that what's happening here <laughs> what know. is going on he says let me find the quote here he's japanese he, right uh, he's got to be i mean the picture looks japanese his name is nakagawa yeah. but uh so he, he he says um that he did this to educate grossman about the history of the swastika as a buddhist symbol of love uh was so, it backwards well it's like it the, it's neither backwards nor part of it's backwards. Part of it's forwards. You get what I'm saying? Like the arms are going the wrong way. Dude. What a shitty Nazi. The, the other complicating factor is it's, it's clear that Nakagawa is not uh, someone of right wing or Nazi esque political perspective. He on social media posts Christmas wishes that say rejoice in the birth of a brown skinned Middle Eastern undocumented immigrant. Oh God. And he posts <sighs> promotional for, you know, Biden and Democrat politics. Whatever's happening. Are, are we going to have a, a Holocaust sequel where the Japanese get the Jews this time? It's going to be like a bizarre world war two mashup. Is that what's happening? It's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> the the uh, Imperial Navy returns to finish what Hitler couldn't. Uh, what, what I don't know how to interpret this because on the one hand, it seems like he doesn't like her for po- the politics of Israel Hamas. Uh, yeah. On the other hand, he's not right wing. So was he trying to fake hate against her or was he actually trying to intimidate her? But if he was actually trying to intimidate her, mark her on a box of soda or seltzer water? I don't know. I don't know what to make of this. So maybe it's real. Maybe he was hoaxing. I know this next one's a hoax, though. Recall former MSNBC analyst Malcolm Nance of you know going to Ukraine to fight on the front lines from the western part of the country. That has nothing to do with the conflict. That guy. Regrettably, Malcolm Nance is indeed back in this country, and he's still making up stories. In response to another guy who claims that uh, he said on Twitter this week that uh, he's told weekly that he's a communist and a pedophile and a traitor and he should leave this country because he's a Democrat or he doesn't like Trump, which is a claim that I don't think is true either. But he's saying, hey, you know, tell me stories that you have of similar experience and Malcolm Nance has to come in and one up or I guess in fairness to Malcolm Nance, this guy was requesting tall tales. Like Malcolm yeah. Nance is telling you. So maybe it's not just Malcolm Nance one-upping, but he's joining in the conversation. And he tweeted the following. 
Someone removed the bolts out of my car's right front tire at a Cabela's. It was a Trumpublican hillbilly who walked right over with a tire iron and loosened three out of the five bolts, hoping I would crash. I had a Biden-Harris sticker on my car. We couldn't get his license plate, but it was a warning. Another incident, someone left a handwritten note in pencil thanking me for my service, but then calling me a traitor. These people are crazy. Be aware. Uh, Number one, if this actually happened, he would have posted pictures of it immediately. The fact that he didn't tells you it didn't happen. He witnessed someone meddling with his car enough to know who this was in his politics, but he didn't get a photo. He didn't get a description. He didn't file a police report. None Mm. of those things. And as some have noted, there's also just the technical description here. That's kind of a mess. I know that doesn't necessarily mean it's, it's false, but like lug nuts, first of all, lug nuts, not, not bolts here. Lug nuts hold the wheel on, not the tire. You don't remove bolts from the tire. (laughs) And a, a tire iron, uh, use a tire iron to get the, the, the tire off the wheel. You use uh, a lug wrench to get those lug nuts off, off, uh, off the, uh, off the, uh, the assembly there, not lug bolts, but he just says bolts. Anyway, someone pointed this out to Nance and said, um, it would, I don't know what you're talking about here. This is a technical mess. Like all these terms are used incorrectly. And he responded, well, you obviously don't own a car, I guess. <laughs> Malcolm Nance has no idea what he's talking about, but okay. Technicals aside, I get that that's not necessarily relevant to whether someone sabotaged his car or not. If you saw enough to know a Trump publican hillbilly did this, you would have caught the guy or you would have had some yeah. effort to catch the guy. You would have got a photo. Nothing. We don't <laughs> Did did Malcolm Nance use his tire iron to tighten down those lugs to get home? How was this resolved since he's mm-hmm. such a car, a car expert in his own description? I don't know. But uh well, uh, if, if Malcolm Nance's car just blows up on the way home. I guess we know that a a Trump publican hillbilly did it. <laughs> uh last story it, we're entering the age where like uh getting confrontational with men entering the women's bathroom is going to be treated as a hate crime and that's happened with a portland conviction it has happened i mean i'm glad it happened in portland at least suitable this happened in idaho i'd be freaking out but an off-duty bartender ordered a patron not to use the women's bathroom and shoved the woman when she tried to explain her gender identity, she was found guilty of second degree bias crime and harassment charges on Wednesday. So this confrontation, I can only see a still video. I wasn't able to find the video, which leads me to believe that it was basically nothing. Um, it was captured on surveillance camera footage showed Cassie McKinter. Is that how you say it? I don't know. Uh, I would guess McIntyre. Oh my God. Of course it's McIntyre. <laughs> Whatever. Jeez, pushing customer Reese Larson, a transgender woman outside the women's restroom at Jake's place. They testified on Tuesday. Larson said she was just uh, she had just stepped out of the women's bathroom, single user room with locking the door. Um, And McIntyre (laughs) cornered her and told her she was a man and she should use the other toilet. Larson said she tried to explain her gender identity, but McIntyre told her to get out using an expletive, then shoved her. The video apparently showed the shove, but the audio did not record anything. And so McIntyre is an, she's an employee of the establishment, not work, not on off, the clock yeah, at was, the time. Yeah, okay. that's correct. Yeah. The jury found her guilty of both counts and determined that a reasonable person would not have acted in the same way. I was not trying to misgender her. I had to look up what transgender was in the dictionary. We're just arguing <laughs> over spilled milk. Like you live in Portland. There's no, also no way that's true. Well, I don't know. I, I Yeah, I mean, it seems hard to believe that no, if you live in that city, you've never seen a transgender person or had questions about that. That's maybe hard to There's believe. There's no way. It's but I also understand, believe, yeah. maybe if it wasn't Portland, I would I'd believe that a little bit more just because there are people who are not interested in political <laughs> matters like this at all. And uh, Anywhere else, if she yeah. lived in Ohio, I'd be like, okay. 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 So, that. so, and what, um, and so she's now convicted of a, a bias crime. A bias crime. Do we know what the punishment yeah. is going to be? I don't know yet. Um, there was this hilarious quote from this tranny though. Um, 
She said she was wondering whether the why did I say she he said he was wondering whether the jury's verdict would be simply another instance of transphobia swept away because that's the essence of transphobic bias erasure. It's not being believed in our system. People are innocent until they're proven guilty. But in the real world, I was judged and sentenced within moments when Miss McIntyre decided to harass me. So I love like even after somebody got convicted of a hate crime for something totally reasonable and that should not be a crime you still turn this on its head as a way that, that you were victimized by the system. You dumb. Even though asshole. the system has completely rewarded this person and yes. protected this person. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's like, there will never be enough. Uh, for any uh, of these people. Well, and just the, the, the backward nature of the times, it was only a few years ago that you'd be sitting in a restaurant or a bar and be like, why is that weird freak man going in the women's restroom? Someone should stop him. Cause he's probably about to do something weird in there. Now, yeah. if you dare utter, such a thing. And I mean, God forbid you intervene in this way. You'll be a criminal if you do. And so for all this discussion of like, Oh, transphobia, Oh, anti-trans bias. Like, well, the law has stepped right up to protect the supposed rights of a man to walk into uh, the women's restroom. Now I'm a little bit confused here just so I understand the situation. It's a women's restroom, but it's like one of those single occupancy ones with a, with a door lock. Yeah. OK, so as far as the risk presented in this particular case, probably low just because it's single occupancy. But the principle of the matter remains like does the sign on the door that says women's mean anything? Anything else yeah, or yeah. not? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm sure they'll lock her up. That'll be the one person who. uh <laughs> who gets locked up in that city and they throw away the key to make sure she can't misgender anyone else in the future. But, uh, got to leave enough time for the movie review. So let's get to it. In a world of movie references flying over his head, one man will finally watch them. This is the Matt and blonde show movie review. Tonight's movie is the 1999 action thriller The Boondock Saints, in which twin brother vigilantes rid Boston of criminals and degenerates while an FBI agent tracks them down, becoming his authentic self as he realizes his job and justice are two very different things. We have no commentary from movie picker Matt, who made the nomination. He has opted out of it, but we appreciate his efforts nonetheless. Of course, we have our AI face swaps. And uh, I'm going to guess based on your commentary earlier that you're not a fan of some of the um, Willem Dafoe indulgences, but you are Willem Dafoe's character in this particular <laughs> presentation. I, and I don't care what he says. He will always be William to me, this Willem thing. Why? His name is Willem. <sighs> Anyway, he's such uh, a good actor. This is a peek into the future with my my two sons, I think. Give it about 30 years time and that will be the trio, uh, my sons and me. Uh, I hope so, at least. Uh, And of course, we have a video submission with uh, the AI face swap as well. Now, you Irish cop. What the hell happened here? Let's try again. Now, you Irish cops are perking up. That's two sound theories in one day, neither of which deal with abnormally sized men. Kind of makes me feel like river dancing. (laughs) Now, I like the audience. I was I thought this movie was like a peek into a blonde right wing death squad dream. And you're telling me that this movie sucked. So you have yeah, the floor. I'll tell you why. Okay. I used to love this movie, but in high school, you know, uh, it's one of those movies. It's, it's got a fight club element to it where you like it when you're a teenager and then you rewatch it as an adult and you're like, wow, this did not withstand my intellectual journey into adulthood. Like I was like, this movie sucks. I'll tell you why. Um, I did have problems with this Willem Dafoe's character being a weird homo. Like I hated that whole element of this. I just, I just hated it. Um, as far as like the moral elements and things like that, that there were some interesting things there and I did appreciate that. And I was politically aligned with a lot of these characters. So I understand why you guys thought I would like it, but it was gratuitously violent in a way that I found distracting from the plot 
most of the characters were unsympathetic. I just was not super interested in the characters. And I didn't find the plot particularly compelling. But my real problem with this is that it, it reads like, like a B movie. And everybody acts like this movie is some kind of um, just excellent, amazing film that has withstood the, te- the test of time. And it, it has this crazy cult following. I always want to review the movies harder that have a cult following, though. So maybe there is this element of me just being a contrarian. It seemed like really up its own ass. And Willem Dafoe's character was horribly over overacted. And then my biggest problem with this is that it was so derivative. It was like derivative of Tarantino. And then his films are derivative of other films like Scorsese. And so I was just like, this does almost nothing for me. Um, but I do remember that I, I liked this movie at one time, but I, I hadn't seen it in 20 years. So I gave it a two out of five. I didn't give it a one. I gave it a two out of you five. You sound like a hysterical bleeping snowflake lesbo bleep. Come on. You suck. Fuck you. Okay. This is, this is going to be your groundhog day. That's what this is going to be. I, uh, no, I mean, I, I, I actually I like when you have an opinion that I don't expect. That's that's sort of the part of the fun of the bit. So I I don't mean to try to like to try to bully you into changing your oh, mind. No, okay. I am genuinely surprised you don't like it though, because all the themes and pieces that I appreciate, I figured you probably would, or maybe you do, and you just don't like the performance or whatever. You know that happens too. But this yeah, big yeah. theme. Kind of the key theme, the biggest theme of the theme of the movie is that the government and justice are not the same. And to the extent that they aren't is now, is it vigilanteism or vigilantism? I want to make sure I don't vigilantism, have vigilantism. I'm going to go with right? vigilantism. I don't have another epitome. I have post-pregnancy or, retardation. Right? <laughs> okay. I I'll say vigilantism. Is that the solution? And this movie is really a moral explanation of that. And I sit and I, I watch this movie and, um, I think that if if you watch this movie and you have anything other than appreciation and wonder for what it might be like to solve all of the degenerate problems with modern society with with such a simple solution, yeah. If you don't have those thoughts, you're not paying attention. And a lot of uh, Willem Dafoe's character, the Smeckler FBI agent's character, his development is coming to terms with the realization that like what he does from a government agent perspective. And actually achieving justice are two different things. And there are all these obstacles and all these interests that mess up the pursuit and achievement of justice. So I grant all of that. Uh, You know, government is just a tool to pursue justice. It's not the definition of justice itself. And so the government, like any other tool, can get corrupted. What happens when that tool gets corrupted? Really the question of the movie. Does that mean that I endorse like this saint style vigilantism? Is that the solution? And I don't think it is long term, even if this this movie kind of romanticizes it. It might be a superior alternative temporarily. But the reason that it's not a solution long term is because it lacks that process. Mm -hmm. And if the truth is really the foundation of any justice system, and it should be, you got to protect that process to discover the truth. That means searching for the evidence. That means protecting the rights of the accused so they don't fall victim to false accusations. All of those things that make the pursuit and application and achievement of justice much different than it's portrayed in this movie, um, unfortunately. So, you know, if, if I'm designing a justice system from scratch, it's not it's not saints, the saints system. But there are worse things than the saint, the saint system, and that's a society that kills just as brutally as they do mm-hmm. without any regard for right or wrong or even in service to the evil itself. So two different questions. Like, do I endorse the saints method as a long term justice system? No. But could I endorse such a thing as a short term fix to a lot of problems that are he- bringing all of society in the other direction? Yeah, I mean, this is this is a, a fan fiction topic. Uh, de, you know, only in defensive context, Susan and Raja Mahan. No, I mean, what we're talking about here is like a, a bandaid rip as opposed to like a, a permanent, permanent system. But the, the topics uh, or the, the themes are, are fascinating. So I really appreciated thinking about that. Uh, now I had the same thoughts about Defoe's gay character. It's like, it, it just, it came why? out of nowhere. I was like, why is this dude gay cuddling but then the joke was hilarious like you wanted to cuddle what a fag, what a fag. That, yeah that made me laugh that cracked me up 
But then I thought, and I don't know if this is what the movie makers intended, but I was like, I don't know. I, now I like it. Like this theme of the fed feds are gay. Feds are trannies. <laughs> I like this. But then I thought about it like, okay, that's kind of, ju- of a juvenile. It's a, a juvenile way to think about it. But is there some depth to it? Like, is there some intended commentary about this guy being sort of a, a confused drifter? Like, and I mean, morally speaking, he doesn't have all these moral concepts square in his head. And part of his character arc is coming to terms with the fact that he's not as morally square as he thought he was. Yeah. Or he's not doing what he thought he was morally. So maybe, maybe it was intended to play in that way. Now, did you at least like the racist joke? Rocco's yeah, racist yeah. joke. That's funny. Yeah. I mean, I can't I can't repeat the whole thing because it goes on and on. Well, it's not that long, I guess, if you if you deliver it quickly. But and it's not the most clever thing in the world. Oh, the white guy's glad that like the black people and the Mexicans are gone. You know, OK, hilarious. It's not just the writing, though. It's the delivery of it. It's like the tension of the moment and the wondering where the joke is going and just what it represents culturally, which is a time where there was actual entertainment coming out of Hollywood. And and now we get the crap that's actually kind of proving that joke's point true, that every minority group does get pandered to while white people get hated, which yeah, sort of the punchline. And uh, last point of appreciation, I Defoe's character is a little overdone for me. Uh, I'll, I'll discuss that in a moment. But the elements of his character that are all about this dancing and this kind of embrace of the chaos it was such a Joker vibe, and it reminded me so much of the, the the scene in Joker with Joaquin Phoenix where he does that iconic dance down the stairs and yeah. fully embraces the chaos and kind of becomes his character in that moment. I thought, man, was, was Joker done? Like, Was it influenced by this movie? Was it some kind of reference to this movie? I don't see any record of that. No commentary to that effect. But the one thing this movie makes me wish, too, is that Willem Dafoe had been a, had been Joker at some point. Uh, it, it seems like a real shame that he never he, it's, he seems like he would be the best, maybe the best Joker. ever. I know the bar is very high with Heath Ledger and I really like Joaquin Phoenix and I'm in a minority even liking um, Jared Leto's Joker. Uh, yeah, not as much as those others, but I do like it. Willem Dafoe is only 68 years old. He could be a nursing home Joker. There's still time, which would be <laughs> Joker's retirement with Willem Dafoe. And it's like, he, I've, I've never thought about, I know he was the villain in Spider-Man, right? I haven't seen that stuff where he was Green Goblin or whatever, but I, this seems like a guy who's made to be Joker and, and it's never come to fruition. Things I didn't necessarily like. I don't know about you, but I thought that God's calling was pretty underwhelming. In fact, you could almost miss it. Yeah. Um, it, it's so brief. So the whole point of the movie is the saints get a message from God. They get God's calling while they're hanging out in the prison cell. They're not imprisoned, but they're just hiding from the press and all the, the frenzy about their case. And if you step out to like grab a beer or take a piss, you might miss that moment. But even if you're, you're watching attentively, you might just mistake that for like a dream or misunderstanding the divinity. You might misunderstand the divinity of that calling. When I first watched it, I didn't understand that it was supposed to be like God's intervention himself. And then I came to realize that later and after watching the movie and reading about it, I'm like, oh, that, okay. I didn't make that connection. But making that connection is so crucial because that's the entire moral justification for their actions. Mm-hmm. So I have, I have three problems with the way this was presented. Number one, that's the moral heart of the movie. That's the moral core of the movie gets about the same time as a joke, gay cuddle session. Like one, one point is a little more important. If you miss that point, you miss the entire justification for the saints actions, because if that was actually God himself, it's not, and it's not like a figment of figment of their imagination or a dream. The saints are compelled to do his bidding and understanding that point is key to understanding their behavior in the movie. And then number three, like granted, I, you know, I have my own, I'm on my own faith journey. I can't claim to tell you like, this is what God looks like. This is what God sounds like. All that stuff. That just struck me as like a very weak and brief presentation for God. Like where's the commanding presence? Where's the authority? Where's the obvious godliness? If I'm going to give credit to this, maybe that's kind of the point that maybe there's supposed to be ambiguity because none of us have such clear communication with God himself that we do have to pick up on subtleties to understand him. So maybe that's the intent. 
But whatever the intent was, I just thought that that point being so important to the movie was was very quick, easily missed, easily misunderstood. The scene deserved more emphasis, more clarity, more depth. But, you know, that all things considered, that's not a huge criticism. Another tiny criticism I have. I liked the idea of the street interviews in the credits because everybody's having that debate that I opened with. Like, is vigilantism inherently bad or can it be good? Right. But then these were just dumb. Like they were painfully scripted and performed like it was a Katie Britt, you know, State of the Union response or something. These people like arguing back and forth in a way that didn't make any sense and was totally unbelievable. And then half the people were just saying no comment. Well, why would you include no comment when it, number one, it's not funny. There's no comedic value to it. Number two, by definition, it has no commentary on the moral issue that we're exploring. What is yeah. They did it repeatedly. What is this? So I thought it was an interesting idea, terrible execution, but what am I doing here? I'm criticizing the way the credits were presented. I mean, that tells you that I like the movie. So, and then, um, you know, Defoe's acting, I think is a little bit overdone. Like sometimes he's just completely off the wall. Like when he realizes that they covered their blood with ammonia and it's just like, okay, I mean, you're an FBI agent though. Like you investigate, like you're freaking out. Like it's the first time you've ever seen it or something. But maybe that's the point. Like that was his, the saints were his final frustration that caused him to turn away from the gay fed lifestyle or something like that. But anyway, I, um, I loved this movie. And so I happily awarded it a coveted five wiki rating. Can you believe it? <laughs> kind of. We love you. You're very special. Originally, I was thinking like that. Con- the the God's message thing was like maybe a f- made it like a four wiki. But then the FBI character being a gay tranny, that was like half wiki value to me. So half wikis round up. It's a five. And that's the first five I've awarded in 2024. Not since Eternal Sunshine. Seriously? Oh, yeah, that's wow. the first five. of the That year. was last year. Yeah. Late uh, or early December, rather. Hmm. So uh, the audience rating, let's see. Let's see. Everyone hates it. Everyone's on board with you. What the hell is this? Actually, this is maybe the most polarizing early vote I've ever seen. A third of people giving it a one, actually below yeah. what you gave it. Interesting. What is the, the uh, now, uh, now I'm very intrigued because I would have expected our audience to love this movie. So is there a troll vote going on or are people actually sincere in their hate for it? But, I don't know. About a quarter of people giving it a five, another fifth giving it a four. So it's like massive appreciation or outright hate. Very interesting. Uh, Next week, it's the Book of Eli. I don't know anything about it. Denzel Washington in a post-apocalyptic world cutting people up with a knife. I saw the trailer. Really? Yeah. That's it. Hmm. So we'll find out what that's about. And uh, it's the last week, as far as the movie after that, it's the last week to vote on Listener Matt's nominations for March. We um, will have a special movie at the end of March. For the fifth Sunday in March, we're going to watch um, The Passion of the Christ, as we talked about last week. So we'll right, take the right. vote off next week, and then the voting list, the list of nominations will refresh uh, after that. But the remaining nominees for the final vote for Matt's list are uh, Nobody, The Road, Jackie Brown, Frailty, Fist Fight, or of course you can reject the list in favor of a randomly selected top-rated movie instead. And as a reminder, if you'd like to read my movie reviews, comment how wrong I am, submit your own rating, vote for the next movie, and sign up for the chance to be the movie nominator for the month, the one and only place to do all of those things is in my weekly movie review column linked in the description and on the homepage of my website, mattchristensenmedia.com and or Matt is dot gay. <laughs> okay, man. Catch up with, uh, with chat here. Uh, let's see over on rumble. Luna chick says Laurel is right. I received an official notice stating you are unlawfully present in the United States. I was born here, but the person who stole my identity wasn't, that was a mess to clean up. Well, it sounds like a useful government notification for once, though. So, uh, wow, yeah. I, I hope you got that resolved. But so an illegal alien stole your identity. I wonder, uh, Lunachik, if you'd be willing to share some of that story with me by email, I'd be curious to hear about it. Because if they stole your identity, how did they know that the person was illegal? If you're yeah. a, you know, a citizen. Very interesting. Laser says, Matt and I once made love. I tried to cuddle with him, but he smacked me and called me a fag. As he stormed (laughs) off, I called out, maybe I'm a fag, but at least I'm not a fed. 
Uh, yeah, that's 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 right. Which is worse? And if you're both, I mean, that's 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 uh, that's just terrible. Uh, thank you, Laser. Very clever. Uh, we're good on D Live. We're good. Uh, oh, oh, actually, over on Odyssey, Rowdy dude. Oh no, you know what you get on Odyssey. <laughs> Uh, he said, can we rename Haiti to cannibal blank shithole island? <laughs> the N word. You know I what the like N word is? Allegedly. Okay. The, the footage has not been verified. Uh, thank you, Rowdy Dude. As a reminder, if you'd like to enjoy completely uncensored chats, the way to do that is uh, over on Odyssey. I don't I don't think I've ever heard of a censored chat on Rumble either, to be fair. But Odyssey, definitely not. Anything goes over there, just like anything goes in Haiti. You want to say the N-word? That's fine. You want to eat a leg? That's fine. You can do either of those. <laughs> okay. Uh, I have Dylan Draper as our next one. Oh, sure. Um, I contributed to the white race last Wednesday. I delivered my firstborn, a boy, Huck Branch, born uh, 1852, March 6th. Seven pounds, six ounces, nineteen ounces, nineteen inches, zero complications. Mom is healthy. I have to brag. Congratulations! That's Congratulations! So great. That is that's excellent for your family, and uh, all the best to you and your wife. And enjoy fatherhood, man. Um, Nakalungi Buck Das Pooch. Which Defoe scene is excessive? There was a firefight. The scene where he dresses up as a pretty girl. That yes, that they fall for like he's Bugs Bunny. Or you mean every time Defoe was on screen? <laughs> I, I assume that question is directed at you, right? Uh, das Pooch. Oh, 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 yeah. Thank you. Um, you know, it's, it's a prior, right, right. A prior, a, a prior chat. He says the, oh yeah. Okay. So the one excessive Defoe scene is the only bad point. That's it. Uh, yeah. I would guess maybe like the, okay. The, to get into it a little bit more, I, the, the drag thing, I get that he needed a disguise for infiltration or whatever, but like what he was, he did take it kind of far. OK, he, yeah, it almost became a sex scene for a second there. Yeah, so it did. I mean, that that was a little excessive. But in your Defoe critical view, if that's fair to say, what what do you think? I know the question was not necessarily directed at you, but what do you think was the most excessive? Was it that or something else? It was that for sure. Okay. Yeah. The faggot scene was funny. The comedic value um, redeemed it. If, if if only for the setup for the joke, it was worthwhile because it only took like 30 seconds. It totally yeah. surprised me. I had no idea that was what that was about, but the joke was the payoff. Um, Mint 20. Regarding Nikki Haley, the best woman did in fact win. None of them. <laughs> no more women in power anywhere at any time. Couldn't agree with you more. Thank you, Mint. I bought PN. No, no. Thank you, sir. Knuckle hunky buck. Snapchat should add a mugshot filter for dumpy girls like Hannah Gutierrez Reed to make themselves look cute. Uh, first of all, thank you, iBot. And uh, we love you. You're very special. Oh, I hit the wrong one. I meant to hit Trump, but you get a Ben Shapiro one. That's fine. Um, as far as her mugshot filter. Yeah, I think that I, it was it was probably just like a trying to look decently presentable for court filter mm -hmm. <laughs> forced yeah. to appear non crazy filter. Yeah, and it worked. It worked. Well, it definitely is an improvement. You decide if it's sufficient, but it's definitely an improvement over the the prior presentation. Kaiser and Gilroy, uh, 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 there will be a football player named Kool Aid entering the NFL draft next month. Yes, he is a jogger. Matt, your thoughts on the sweet baby ink debacle? It's been a hot topic in the game community. What? I actually, I, I don't know what that is because I'm so out of the game community. I mean, I haven't even played a single video game for years at this point. Though I am plotting my return for when my uh, toddler son is able to enjoy those with me. But I don't, I don't even know. I can't tell you anything about the controversy because I haven't followed this at all. Uh, I see people, I see articles about it, people talking about it, but unfortunately I'll have to punt on it because I just don't, uh, I don't have time to read all about it. But if, it, if, if I'm going to guess that it's yet another episode of leftist politics, <laughs> ruining video games, you know, we're right. Uh, someone emailed me about this. We're right on the 10 year anniversary of Gamergate, which of course was oh, yeah. a, a big Ten years. <gasps> you know, red pill moment for a lot of people. I know that term is kind of overused now, but as far as people seeing the destruction and consequences of progressive politics, progressive ideology, ruining everything, that was a big eye opener for a lot of people, including myself. For me, it took a little bit longer because I actually had to see the way that they treated Trump to really yeah. get it. 
but the the feminism the, the feminist intrusion on video games was was definitely you know something I was thinking about as my perspective started to change. Uh, a lot and, of and yes, there is a guy named Kool Aid, a, a football player named Kool Aid, at least nicknamed. I don't know if that's his legal name or not, but Kool Aid will be playing in the NFL next year. Um, I lost my place. Uh, Jolly Roger, thanks for still doing the show. I never miss an episode. Still, that's how long we've been on because <laughs> we're still doing the show. Thanks for not passing away of old age by now. I know, um, right? No, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for keeping the show operational. Imperious. I've long suspected that cis isn't real and exists solely to allow weepy mothers to get away with infanticide. I mean, that's not all of it, but you'll see in my video. It is fi about 5% of cases are probably murder. Um, two dogs, Mike D. There, that was when we found out about the hundreds of thousands of fraudulent signatures. Trump called Raffensburgers, Raffen, Raffensburgers OFC. Office, and start, I assume. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. And said to start going through them. They only needed to find enough to win. Yeah, it, whether you're going to call that criminal in its intent depends on what you think Trump is talking about. And it seems I, di I didn't know that specific context, but it, it seems to me pretty apparent he's not calling Raffensperger to say, like, I want you to fraudulently create 11,000 votes. No, he's saying there's probably some oddities that we need to explore here. Yeah. And I, I am going to guess that those oddities are sufficient to change the result of the election in this state. If that's what he believes, even if he believes it wrongly, I mean, you can't criminalize a belief pursued through legal means. That's what the legal system exists to accommodate. You have legal recourse for decisions or policies that you disagree with. And if you want those legal options explored, you have the right to explore them. But whatever. The, the, the case is such a disaster. We'll see if we'll see if that issue ever even hits the courtroom. Um, Jerry Smith says, suck, cock, saints. Doc Saints. Uh, <laughs> I assume he didn't like the themes. I know. Uh, Dutch Schaefer, Matt, I got my Nuga shirt. Good. Good for oh, you. I, I'm glad to hear it. So they're still printing them. They haven't yep. been banned yet. Yes. Uh, best minor league baseball team, the Chattanooga Lookouts. I'm glad you're a fan. Train man. Remember, simping for blonde is always okay. Don't stop simping. Blonde is an acceptable simping target. Blonde, you are attractive. Go to the gym, fatty. Stop being weird. I just got cleared to go to the gym yesterday. You guys know that I just had a baby, right? Okay. Well, now I wonder, is he saying that to you or is he saying that to the others? Because I think he's saying uh, f -slur for gay guys. Faggots? Yeah. Oh. I think he's telling oh. everyone else to go to the gym. Oh, I'm sorry. I took that personally. It's true <laughs> because I, I need to go to the gym. That's why. Um, Jacko, look at Kate Cox or smirk. 10,000% cluster B narcissism. She's in heaven there with the attention on her. It's why she did what she did. It's such a perfect example of how the bees have taken over. There's probably some truth in that. Uh, what, what do I, I don't, I understand what he means, but I don't understand what the bees are. What's the bees? Cluster B is like borderline personality uh, oh. syndrome women. Okay. Um, I have to reload. Okay. Do you have the next one? Go I don't. Actually, we have to refresh at the same spot, but I can do that. Oh, no. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Laurel says, Entering the U.S. without inspection is, oh, it is a criminal offense. Well, then I'm, my, my sources must be wrong, or at least certain circumstances are a civil offense. But Laurel would certainly know. So I would take Laurel's information. Uh, we call them EWIs, as in entered without inspection. Different from overstays, as in entered with a visa and stayed beyond the authorized period. Okay, so that would be the distinction. That is to say, if you have an authorized entry that is overstayed, that's not a criminal offense. If you cross without any lawful presence in the first place, there's a, a criminal piece to that is what Laurel is saying. And uh, Laurel's an immigration lawyer, so Laurel would know a thing or two. And I'll take her uh, at her word on that one. Thank you, Laurel. TJS is up next if you got it. Um, I am going to have to boogie soon. I can hear my baby crying, but I have right. a few more. TJS, it's almost 3.30 a.m. Where, so, where I am, so I cannot watch live, but I will watch the replay tomorrow at work. Thanks for all your amazing content. Thank you. We really appreciate well, it. Well, you don't have to lie, but I appreciate the, the praise. Thank you, TJS. Appreciate your support for the show. Holden Mulray. Hi, true seekers regarding chips and candy. Oh, my gosh. Um, that is not shrinkflation. Those are Zelensky size. <laughs> Just wait till you see Greta size snacks. Oh, no. A $100,000 bar may actually crack 100000 <laughs> Hey, uh... 
Zelensky size, not fun size anymore. Zelensky size. Zelensky size. size. I'm going right. to let you finish up. I'm going to go take care of the baby. Thank you guys so much. And <coughs> excuse me, a video will be posted within the next few hours. All right. So check check out it my out. Channel. If you don't remember, I am blonde of the belly of the beast on YouTube. <laughs> I assume it'll also be posted on Twitter. If you want to find it that way at blondes underscore tweets. Excuse me. And I'm going to start a rumble channel. I have to do that. You haven't done that yet. You no, can mirror so. the content. You don't even have to re-upload it. You can just set it to mirror. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. All right. Well, Godspeed. And uh, <laughs> I will catch you Thank next you. weekend. Bye, guys. Okay. okay. Thank you, guys. Uh, I will finish off the chats here. We'll call it a night. Uh, Knuckle Hunky Buck. Biden explaining to Super Nintendo Ch- <laughs> Super Nintendo Chalmers. There's a Simpsons uh, reference I remember about this come to Jesus talk. I'm from Utica, and I've never heard them called steamed hams. No, it's an Albany expression. Isn't that also a uh, a Simpsons bit? I forget. Uh, yeah, that's a Sim. Yeah, right. That, that's I'm looking at it now on Reddit. That's also a Simpsons and Chalmers conversation. Man, those were the days when the Simpsons uh, Simpsons was actually a good show, but that's long since passed. Doesn't mean the classics uh, aren't worthy of praise still, though. I should go back and watch old Simpsons that I haven't watched since like, you know, being, uh, being a, a teenager at the, at the end of the, at the end of the nineties, those were the days when it was on reruns. Uh, danger pudge says, Hey y'all, I missed to, or I've, so, let's try again. Hey y'all, I managed to catch at least a little bit. Thanks for being awesome. And it is so amazing to see you and your family's thriving. We love you. You're very special. Well, you stole my bit cause you certainly deserve one yourself. For the, we for love you. For the show. You're very special. Very much appreciated. And thanks for keeping us on the air. And of course, thanks for your kind words. All the best to you and your family as well. AP says, I have a friend on Facebook who said doing, who said, God, I'm at the, I'm at the Biden stage of the night. I can't even read from the teleprompter anymore. I have a friend on Facebook who said, good for you, Virginia, dude. She lost the other 49 and it was Democrats voting in a Republican primary. I've never seen TDS like this. What you're talking about Nikki Haley's performance in, oh, or maybe you mean Vermont, Vermont, right? You're saying this, this friend said good for you, Nikki Haley for winning in Vermont. And yeah, she did lose the other 49. Um, but yeah, of course, of course, TDS will compel them to congratulate her. I, I'm, I'm not surprised to hear it at all. Uh, thank you for supporting the show. <laughs> oh, God. Haitian says, this fried chicken tastes real good. What's your secret? Yeah. As, as I said, I, I'm not, I don't think there was, it, it was not 11 herbs and spices on this leg, okay? There wasn't even an effort made to 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 spice it up a little bit, to add, I don't know, a condiment or two. Just no decency whatsoever. He's acting like it's uh, Donner Pass or something when he could just go to the store and, you know, buy plenty of ingredients. Well, I don't know. Maybe he can't. The store's probably out of food. <laughs> I guess that's why he's eating the leg. But I, the, the weird thing about that video is the guy doesn't look distressed about it at all. That's the weird thing about that video. We've heard of episodes of cannibalism historically in cases like the Donner Pass or in cases like what was that soccer team that crashed in the mountains and they had to eat they're dead out of necessity. This guy looked like he was kind of enjoying it in this video. Not only did he like not have an objection to it. It it looks like it it actually did look like he was tearing a piece off a rotisserie chicken or something, but I don't know. For all I know, that video is complete crap and it's not from Haiti, but it is from somewhere. You know, even if it's not from Haiti right now, it is from somewhere. So that is the thing that happened. I just, I would like to know for sure the context in which it did whatever's going on. That guy doesn't seem sufficiently desperate to be doing what he's doing. Das Pooch says the no comment part in the credits has to come back around to the very first scene about good men do nothing out of apathy or fear. I believe. Okay. So they're trying to get at this idea that if you observe evil happening and you do nothing to stop it, or you say no comment in this way that you are a part of that problem, at least passively. Maybe that's it, man. If that's what they're trying to get at, that's a, it's kind of a deep cut of a connection there. That's that. Uh, I don't, I don't think lands the way that they expected it to, 
Or maybe I'm just an idiot, which is also a possibility. But either way, as I said, if I'm sitting here getting technical about like, oh, the way they did the credits was really stupid. Um, that tells you I don't have a lot bad to say about the movie. Two Dogs Mike D, if she got her identity stolen by an illegal and the government now sees her as an illegal, she's probably going to be able to get <laughs> all kinds of free shit. Well, congratulations on your new earnings and congratulations on <laughs> building the country, too. Um, yeah, that I, I would love to hear more about that story because, man, that sounds insane. Thank you, Two Dogs. Bocephus says, Blonde, uh, did your current co-host mention... Uh, repping Grandma Towler's Tea. I believe they have a U.S. distributor. Also, Boondock Saints is the Tears for Fears of Vigilante movies. I don't know if that's a... Oh, I, Blonde was tweeting about Tears for Fears or something, right? So I assume that's a good thing, right? You're saying that uh, that would be a compliment to uh, to Boondock Saints. I'm sorry Blonde isn't here to respond to this. But I will... Um, I'll bring the Towler's Tea to her attention. I know this was the business of the... Is this the business of the family of the guy who was just put in prison in the UK for his uh, hateful stickers that we talked about last week. Um, yeah, if there's a way to uh, to help out that family, I, I'm certainly open to it. I don't know much about their business or what, you know, what opportunities might be available with that. But I can bring that to Blonde's attention and I'm sure she would know more. I think we're all set. Looks like we're good on YouTube and Tippy. Uh, Addicted to Drums says feed the kids over on Rumble. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. That's, uh, you know, one more day where we're not eating legs uh, on the open flame in the street or anything like that. So thank you, man. Appreciate your support for the show. We're good on DLive and we're good on Odyssey as well. So uh, that will do it. Appreciate everybody uh, tuning in tonight as always. Appreciate your super chats. Appreciate your live chat. Appreciate your support for the show in general. If you're uh, listening later on demand, thank you kindly as well. Uh, and if you are looking for more to listen to, you haven't had your fill, well, head on over to my website, mattchristensenmedia.com. You can find not only past episodes of this show, but we got my new Wednesday show, The Matt Christensen Hour. You can listen to that. Or, of course, as Blonde mentioned, check out her new video that's going to be posted very shortly on her YouTube channel and, uh, I assume, on her Twitter account, too, at Blondes underscore tweets, Blonde in the Belly of the Beast on YouTube. And, of course, all of this show and my Wednesday show are available in audio formats as well. You can listen there, too, if you prefer. As always, find everything show-related at mattchristensenmedia.com. We'll be back next Sunday, because if it's Sunday, it's not Meet the Press. It is The Matt and Blonde Show. Have a great night. Yeah.